the hundredth comment that tags at Urbicon at the lit outlet at Kobe on the Mons official kicks. Under, Tag the uh, hottest Instagram underscore. models to fucking <laughs> Kobe on the Mons page, the not the Urban Con page. Kobe <laughs> on the Mons page. He needs direct contacts. He needs he needs he needs a number and an yeah. email. And your most recent photo, no makeup. Yeah, no makeup. <laughs> no, 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 no. I like the makeup. Keep the makeup. Keep the makeup. All right. So look, at, what, what we'll really do is hundredth comment on your YouTube. Whoever does it, I'll give you a pair of tickets. Dope. And you'll get early access to get in there before. So as the doors open at 12, you can be there by 1130. Okay. Walk in and see the event for yourself. Tell a friend to tell a friend. You guys heard yep. it right now. So, but you um, need to tag two people in there as well. Okay. So if you're on Spotify listening, go over to YouTube. If you're on Apple uh, Podcasts, go over to YouTube. If you're on uh, the Patreon, our Patreon members, make sure you guys go on the YouTube channel. Leave a comment. Tag two people. 100th comment gets two free tickets what's poppin it's your boy moses aka nomo chilling right here in the let out of podcast got two very special guests in the building i got mr kicks kobe on the mars that's right kobe on i like that honestly on instagram i was gonna say i don't know why i was gonna say Cobain. Cobain. yeah the whole world Everyone says Cobain. Cobain. <laughs> and if you're black you're gonna say kobe on kobe on it's interesting it's like different nationalities I approach it differently. I always it's, thought that was interesting. I don't know. My brain just gives up after three letters, and it just comes up with whatever. And say I, I didn't read it all the way. That's, that's just me being done. Right. No, no, I get it. I, get um, it. I do the same thing. Welcome Cobain. to the podcast. Welcome to Southgate. You know, the first and last time you're ever going to be in Southgate because <laughs> the only time people come to Southgate is to be in the podcast. So please, welcome, welcome, and thank nah, you. Now we being come here. for the Marie's clothes, bro. Okay. You guys been out here before? You know what? Southgate got a lot of beautiful women. <laughs> that's what we're known for, dog. I'm gonna be honest. That's what they know. I I did. I had an ex girlfriend that used to be in Southgate. Okay. That's, that's a lot of people like, you know, for lack of better words, say we got a lot of bitches out here, you know, <laughs> for lack of better words. Um, but, you know, you guys are here for for a major event you guys want to announce and promote here. Uh, but before we jump into that, uh, why don't you guys go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourselves individually. Go, Kobe. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, my name is Kix. Uh, I come from Riverside. Uh, I'm a part of the Block Report, the docuseries that's on Chicano Hollywood app. Um I'm blessed to be a part of the Urban Con team. You know, this is my best friend, my brother, Kobe on. Uh, we teamed up, we're making things happen. Well, I hail from Santa Ana um, in Orange County. Um, uh, me and Kicks, we've been friends now for several years now. Uh, about five, six years, right? Yeah, going past almost Something seven. like that, right? Almost Something like that, about seven years now. And... Um, um, yeah, and you know, a minute we, uh, at first, we didn't really know each other too well. Like, we just would say, what's up? You know what I'm saying? We had a mutual uh, person that connected us, and it was like, whatever, like, like, hey, what's up, dog? What's up? What's up? And then Kix was doing his own thing in the music game. He already was, like, managing artists. Um, he was doing his own thing. And then me, I was, like, in the same realm but in a different area, you know what I'm saying? Like doing the same thing, um, you know, cause he was like rapping and managing and doing all that stuff and behind the scenes. I was done rapping. Transitioning. And, and transitioning out of the, out of trying to like be in front of the camera to be and be it. behind the camera. And in that sense is where I started understanding real business so that's when i got involved in business in that aspect but we'll, we'll get to all that yeah. okay okay so you guys are both uh used to be in the music industry yeah i used to rap myself i used to uh actually be part of a group called young and motivated watch spit a few bars psych spit a few bars no <laughs> Well, I know where I, I know he got the illest shit. I know where I live. He got I, the illest shit. Kobe on got the best video on, on YouTube right now. I'm gonna tell you right now, it's got like a million views. Go say, bro. What's, what's the one called? Zelda. It's Zelda freestyle. Yes, it's considered a classic. Okay. Yeah. I'm just kidding. That's where we first got the player cards, you know. That's where we got the player cards. So card. we were we were we were basically rappers. We were coming out. Uh, we were trying to kind of find our way in there. Uh, I I ran with a group called Young and Motivated. It's also my T-shirt brand that I was running before called Young and Motivated. Um, we actually used to do shows across uh, California. And we got pretty big. We were doing really well. And then, um, you know, just everyone kind of grew and split off, you know. I started realizing I wasn't that great of a rapper, you know. And you kind of have to, when, when you realize that, you kind of have to transition away. 
as slowly as you can so it doesn't seem so much but it, it kind of floated me away after a while okay but um you know i just i, I realized there was a lot more behind the scenes that's why i transitioned into being a, a music manager i managed a, an artist um i learned that i learned in the quick three months the real game behind it and it's it's crazy um you know once kind of things went sideways with that one um i got a i got a chance to finally really sit down with kobe on and uh we talked and uh kobe on one thing about kobe on this guy he'll he'll give you a bunch of creative ideas he'll throw you out some of the wildest ideas and you'll be like okay i guess it sounds cool maybe not and then and then once he starts explaining it more to you you're like this guy has a fucking idea and so um you know that's how block report kind of came around you know we uh i was actually his first interview that he ever did uh we had we had it in mind to shoot while cutting <laughs> right right see what happened was i had a barber shop and um i was trying to figure out at the time how I could get more, because um, I still wanted to be in somehow in the media world, but I just wasn't really, um, really like my position. I really didn't know what my position was, and so when, so I had a barber shop, and any barber who knows the barber game, whether you own a shop or not, you'll know that. It's very, very slow. It's a very slow business. And it's so slow that it can also be very frustrating considering the bills are right on top of you. So I was thinking, how could I think of a way to draw more attention to my barbershop? So I had a really nice barbershop. So then I had this cool camera gear because I was really into wanting to get into filming and doing all that. So as I was doing that, I was sitting around with another dude because I had just got, I had been um, interviewed by somebody else. And then they were, we were talking about my short lived career as a rapper. And my music was like, it was a different feel. Coming out of Santa Ana, I was normally used to funk, but I had done some music out in Atlanta and done some music out in Vegas. So I had picked up a different style. So it was really like an identity crisis when I came to Cal back to California because at that time, nobody was fucking with that sound. And so people were looking at me like, that's whack. And one thing about the Southern California Raza, like we're with the, with the shit, we're with the movement, but we really like our old school music. So it's really hard for us to get past what you grew up on. Right. So anyways, anyway, so I'm sitting at the barbershop and I go, I need to create something. So at this time, I'm sitting there with this other gentleman. There's no money coming in. So I'm sitting here trying to figure out how can I draw more attention? So after about I said, I'll start interviewing people, but I'm not going to interview rappers. I'll interview random personalities, entrepreneurs for whatever it is. Right. It was like entrepreneurs, whatever. But everybody I know. Like what we were saying earlier, nobody was fucking with me. Nobody knew who I was. Nothing of mine had taken off. Um, I mean, all I had was just go to work and go home and kids. That's it. So I'm looking at all these social media personality people thinking, I want to interview this person. I want to talk to this person. But, but I'm not um, worth the fuck, right? Remember, we're not worth the fuck. I wasn't worth the fuck to, to talk to. So one day, uh, Kix comes, gets a haircut. Or somehow, some way, yeah, he I, came. He, like, he was like a last minute thing. He needed a haircut. I got a cancellation. My barber well, yeah, he me. got a cancellation. So he remembered kind of how to find me. So he came in and got a haircut. And one thing about me and haircuts, I don't switch barbers. And I, you know, I feel like that cheating stuff. But once I, once he touched my head and blessed me, bro, I was like, damn, man, this is crispy. I gotta come back. So, so when I, when, so he came, got a haircut, and then at that point, I was like, I said, hey, you're doing all that, like, all that shit, right? Like with the interviewing, uh, the managing. So then I said, hey, why don't you be my first interview? But my concept was to cut hair and do the interview. Because one thing that I know about anything is that it cannot be the same. 
it has to be different. If you do the same, you'll get lost in the sauce, right? Nobody will know who you are. So right off the bat, you got to come out swinging. Mine was haircut while an interview. I'm already a pretty badass barber. But let's put this into perspective. And, and so after that, it was horrible. It was a terrible fucking interview. It was you boring. Hear, it, 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 it wasn't sound. right. The sound wasn't right. It was you horrible. You can hear the buzzing of the clippers. Like you're gonna, that's like, the first thing I was thinking about. Like, like buzz, how, buzz, you have something in your ear it, it next sound, to the microphone. It sound, if, if it would have been an audio only podcast, it would have sounded like fucking dudes getting vibrated on the whole fucking <laughs> ASMR, interview. bro. It's straight <laughs> ASMR. It's like, man, what y'all <laughs> doing over there? Yeah. Hey, how'd you how'd you learn to do this? <laughs> 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 Isn't it, but like I see what you're saying like in, in, in theory it's a great concept because what goes on in the barbershop is a lot of barbershop talk a lot of people expressing their opinions it's like a safe place for dudes to go talk so in theory it's a great idea but it, but watch this here's the part here's the part that was here was the thing what one thing that I do in anything is whatever anybody and everybody's doing I will do the absolute complete opposite I will not do something that everybody else is doing up until that point, I had yet to see interviews go on in a barbershop. Barber shop. Ever. It's, let alone, I've seen the Moreno community do it. More or less have bullshit talk clips of talking in barbershops, even locker room shit. But I had yet to see it in the Chicano community. Honestly, call me fucking crazy. But up until before us, as crazy as it may sound, I don't think it existed. I can't think of one Chicano interview podcast that happened in a barbershop prior to 2018. And we came up with that idea and the concept. Let's give it a one time for this. Give it a one time for that. One time, one time, one time. But uh, you, you got to understand, too, being in a barbershop, like you guys said, you know, it's a, it's a comfortable feeling. It's like where you give your therapeutic, you know, mindset to. It's where you're able to tell your barber, like, man, I had a fucking shitty week. And, uh, you know, that, that was just cool to, to, to be on that interview and actually be able to express yourself in a different way. What we learned is don't use the shavers, don't use, don't use the cuts. Just go ahead and interview them in there. You know, it's crazy. When you sit in a, in a seat, in a barber seat, it's like you open up like a book. That's true. It's crazy. It's true. It is, very, it, is, it is therapeutic. You know, it is very therapeutic. So anyway, so at that point, I'm looking for somebody to help me. So months later... I reach out to Kix and say, you know what, Kix? At this point, he had already been telling me what he had been going through as his struggles as a manager, right? Now, I had a really good friend who worked at Sony and Interscope, worked with a lot of famous people, super famous. Like, I mean, he did some of the biggest tracks you've heard on the radio. What was the friend of mine, Andrew Mezzi. And he has done some of the biggest songs that you have heard. This is a personal friend of mine. He was the one mixing King Little G when he first started, Compton Chapel. Uh, I think Baldacci had got some work from him. And so and and me, he was doing all my work. And he, you know, at the time, me and him were going back and forth from Atlanta back to over here. And I was in the studio with these guys before as they were like kind of coming up, but I was nobody. I was just sitting there like shadowing him as he was an engineer. So I had advice from him and I was kicking it down to him on what you know, what I have been told not to do, do this, do that. So long story short, I'm doing block report. We do the interview. It doesn't work out. Months later, as I, we're keeping in touch, um, then I go, hey, why don't you do the interviews? And I'll do the camera work. Now, mind you, I'm self-taught, right? So the shit ain't going to always be on point. You know what I'm saying? So I, I tried my hardest to give it good. <laughs> and when we upload it to YouTube, we're all excited. And then we go to the comments. You fucking audio is whack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got fuck no sound. What's up with the sound, man? What, I can't believe it's What so the low. fuck is up with the camera, man? Is it an earthquake? You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro. It was, really it was bad. But it's so dope because you go back and you look at it now. And, and um, but by this point, I had gone through so much shit. He had gone through so much shit. But now, months later, or not even, like, probably, what, year, year like, later, a, a year little later. over a year later, at this point, I got a brand. It's cracking. It's all over the fucking United States. 
I'm traveling everywhere. So then I start going, let's start interviewing barbers. Fuck the rappers. Let's, get, let's start mixing everybody, not just a rap thing, everybody. And then um, We've seen little by way. little, little by little, Block Report became something else, you know. And then, you know, we're, we're still working on it. There's still more cool things to come. Hey, you remember who, who our first interview was with? Yeah, Tony Coda. Tony Coda, yeah. Tony Coda, Tony shout Coda. out Tony Coda. Tony Coda ended up being our first interview, right? This guy not only was starting starring in uh, major music videos, but he actually went on to be uh, one of the stars also in Dahmer. Um, he's still continuing to do all this stuff, and he'll be at this year's Urbicon too as well. But Doja Cat, he was in Doja, Doja Cat's Cat video. He was in. He was, he was, in, um, um, he was actually in uh, Who Wants Smoke. Uh, that was with um, G Herbo and uh, Little Dirk. He was in that one. Well, you guys knew each other before, and then you guys started linking up more yeah. uh, through the block report. So now you guys are doing that. You guys are actually on Chicano Hollywood, which is fucking dope. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank that you. was actually through Kobeon. Kobeon linked up with uh, Johnny uh, a couple months later. And uh, the one thing about Kobeon was I wanted the episodes to just drop, 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 drop on YouTube. But uh, what we learned in the business is that you can drop all this stuff in there, but you're not going to get nothing out of it. And if you just keep dropping it and just even people, no one's really going to listen to you. Um, Johnny came along and uh, Johnny had a really great platform idea, you know, Chicano Hollywood's the Chicano Netflix. And uh, he really pitched it to us and he gave us an opportunity to bring it on there. And Kobeon released uh, our first season on there. Yeah, you know, the, the one of the one of the things that. Um, so in all of this, I'm studying, right? I'm studying. One thing about me, my creative process is almost like I, I, I'll even to my own horn on this one. I have a really crazy creative process and anything you tell me, like I said, I'll take a different approach on it. Right. Um, so the best thing that we could have ever done was not drop the episodes. We recorded and recorded and recorded and recorded. And, we and, wanted so, to drop and them. so much life stuff was happening to me that it almost, it was like, I, it disabled me from being able to move forward with, dropping the videos i mean it was like unrealistic shit now so many years later i completely understand what happened see i'm gonna get spiritual on you is that what had happened was there were people in our circles that weren't supposed to be there had we had dropped those interviews with those people that were in the circle they would have they were gonna fuck us over anyway but then they would have got the fame off of us and established connections. By me not being able to drop the um, the episodes in a timely manner, eventually those snakes withered away after the grass was cut. Once they withered away, eventually every all the snakes went away. So I'm now when I drop these episodes, those people aren't in them because I edited them out. They don't deserve the greener pastures. You know what I'm saying? So the clout that was going to come with it that eventually led to Urban Con, those people would have benefited from it and would have fucked us over in the end. So Sometimes I want to say it was like, you know what I'm saying? It was, you know, it, it was God protecting us because some people can't go where you're going to go. Some people are here for the moment. Some people are here for the whole ride. You know, and you it breaks my heart. Up. You know what I'm saying? It breaks my heart because there's people out there who don't want to see you succeed. You know what I'm facts, saying? Facts. They don't want to see you succeed. There's humans out there. What did DJ Khaled said? There's humans out there that don't want to see you succeed, don't believe in you. But yeah. it, the, the thing is, is that all bullshit aside, um, in, in this business, everybody you're going to come across, I want to say about 95% of the people you're going to come across are going to be people who are quick to stab you in the back. They're no good. A lot of them are pieces of shit. Real, you know realistically. It. We all use each other. We're using you for talking about us. And you're using us to talk about us, right? So it's okay. That's fine. The problem is, is when you're trying to take, 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 take. And then as soon as they get everything they want, they stab you in the back. That's where it's a problem. Yeah, Kobe taught me a really great lesson. Um, when I first came in, into the music industry, I thought everyone was my friend. I didn't think there was not one bad person out there that was trying to, like, fuck me over or anything. But then he put in my head, he's like, look, I understand everybody out here is a snake. He goes, I'm a snake. 
you're a snake. And I was like, wait, bro, I'm not a snake, bro. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. But he's like, he brought, he broke it down. He's like, look, everyone uses you for a reason. And whatever that reason is, they're going to use you for that moment. And they're going to wither away. They're going to leave you away. Look, since Urban Khan dropped, I have been voted sexiest man alive. You know what I'm saying? But before Urban Khan, I wasn't shit. You know what I'm saying? Now I can pick up the phone and be, what's up, baby? No, they call me and tell me, what's up, baby? You this is Kobe on Jones, like Mike Jones. Back then, they didn't want him. I, I, you know what I'm saying? Now I'm hot, they all want me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, you know, um, there is a difference. We're all snakes. I know people don't like to hear that term. But the truth is, we're all snakes. The difference is, there's a difference between a garden snake and a rattlesnake. Garden snakes like to just be alone and left alone, don't fuck with nobody. They roam by themselves. Rattlesnakes hide and wait for a kill. It's a real game. So what are you? Are you a rattlesnake or a garden snake? I would say I'm a garden snake, but I'll easily morph into a motherfucking rattlesnake. The difference with me is that I'll be that one that smiles back to you. Just don't give me the reason to bite you because I won't bite you. Karma. One thing about me, I will never attack you until you attack me. Except when I do it, oh, God, it's a big issue. <laughs> you know, oh, fuck that fool. How dare he? You know what I'm saying? The people, the people who talk shit about me used to love me. You know. Remember that. The people that talk shit about me were the same people that are not telling you how much I helped them. They forget to leave that part out because then it's not going to sound so good. What's that saying? You do nine, nine good things for somebody, but they always remember that one thing that you didn't do. Yeah. It's like you as a barber. You can do a hundred cuts straight. A hundred fucking cut flawless. Have one fucking haircut that ain't right. Damn, I ain't never going back that far. Fuck that place. Swapping barbers. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so understanding who you are and what position you play is the best thing you can ever do. Because you eliminate a lot of hurt feelings. You eliminate a lot of relationships that ain't going to go nowhere, that are not beneficial. And you'll learn to cut people from, from you. Because everybody is dead weight. If they're not pulling themselves, if they're not contributing, they're really just holding you down. You got to distinguish that real quick. How do you do that? You just got to watch them work. You know, Give them you a task. Yeah. Give them a task. Give yeah. them a task. Give them one thing to do. Just give them one thing to do. Delegate one thing. Hey, it's dog, this is your responsibility. Watch them not come through. There you go. Your answer is right there, clean and clear. You don't got to think about it so deep. You don't got to go for it so long. Give them one task and make it an important one and watch how that shit just... You, you got to call... Hey, did you get it done? Oh, not yet, dog. Oh, man, I totally forgot about oh, you. Oh, like, man, excuses. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Oh, shit, I forgot. Uh... Uh, uh, okay, right then and there, you got your answer. The person's dead weight. It will only get heavier as you continue. One thing when we started the Block Report, uh, my task at Block Report was to get artists, get entrepreneurs, get people on there. And uh, coming from 10 years plus of sales background, I know how to talk to people and kind of bring everybody in. And then, um, you know, once I realized when I, I was getting kind of overwhelmed with the, with the task, I separated out there. Hey, can you do this for me? Can you do this for me? And then we started seeing stuff. Little by little, trickle in. Oh, man, it's not getting done, bro. Like, I can't get that person. But then I'll go back and I'll go hit them up and they'll be like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm down. I'll be there on this day, this day, this day. And you're like, what did you do in that meantime? Well, you know, you said you did it, but it didn't happen, you know? So then you, then you, start, you start saying to yourself, why am I carrying you? Why, why are you, oh, why are you here? You know what I'm saying? Like, you bring, you, you bring no substance here. So, cut. Simple the as that. Part, the part of being a boss is knowing where to cut. Knowing who to cut and knowing how to cut. The most disrespectful thing that I can do to you is remove myself from you. You will never hear me argue. You will never hear me fight. Never you, will talk bad about you. you will never hear me talk bad about you. I will simply remove myself. Because when I remove myself, everything goes. 
And then you go, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on, Kovion. But what about the, yeah, that goes with me too. But what about Modelo? That, that goes with me too. Well, what about all these connections in New York and Florida and Texas and all these nationwide connections that I have? That goes with me too. They're on, they only talk to you because they fuck with me. But I remove my cosign, you bring nothing to the table. That's why it's very important, whatever it is you're doing, that you have an important part. Kicks knows his part. I always tell Kicks, Kicks, you are like nobody's getting to Urban Con. Nobody's getting any of the shit we got going on. I don't give a fuck if they want to talk to me. Unless the bitch is bad as fuck. <laughs> Unless we're talking about motherfucking Rebecca J, Danny Banks, you know, some of the, you know, unless we're talking about these beautiful women want to holler at me, then yeah, it's a problem. Kicks, <laughs> kicks, you, the way. Get the, <laughs> kicks you got no business <laughs> cock blocky there. You're married, <laughs> hand it over here. Yeah. But that's funny. they have to go through kicks. Right. Nobody's talking to me. I don't, I'm, I'm not, I don't care. I deal with the fire marshals. I deal with the permits. I deal with the counties. I deal with the... Kicks is the man. I do the business. You want to get into the fucking, you want to get in the building, you're going to go to Kicks. Because even if they come to me, I'll be like, sounds great. Uh, let me, I'll redirect them to Kicks. I don't give a fuck who you are. Because Kicks' position has to be known and respected. There's a hierarchy here. And Kicks, nobody gets anywhere without getting through Kicks. Yeah, it's, it's been a, a, a great thing that, you know, he does that too because it also eliminates himself from you know, being just funneled with people. Well, the, now the, I can take people out. That, because that kicks is really a, kicks is important. You don't understand. I un, I value kicks opinion. I value kicks position. I value everything kicks does. Without kicks, I don't give a fuck who you are. I'm not talking to you. Kicks gotta prove it. It's kick approve. You know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> it, it's just because the thing is, is that it's important for people to know. That if you fuck with me, you fuck with him. Bam. Goes with well, everywhere we go. You might not see him all the time, right? But he's there. He's part of the thing. We tag him in the Modelo shit too. Because he's part of us. But on, on some real talk though, like honestly, we're, all, we're a tight-knit family. Like, we're a tight-knit group of people. A group of friends that, you know, really care about, you know, the culture, the people. And the connections we make with people. Like we really do care about everybody. Um, you know, none as much as everything's business, and I understand everything is business. I still retain still some small form of you know like hey, that's still a friend of mine. I I you know we have a really good friend of ours, uh, Fabian Alomar. We watched him. Fabian, yeah, yeah. Fabian. We watched him for more interview. But I, I keep in mind he was on the Mayans, and when I hit him up, I knew him from the Mayans. I knew him from the work he was doing, the background work, and then him working with Enki Boys, and. Now to see him not only just be on the minds, but also be on this fool and progress and progress. Hot progress. Cheetos. Hot Cheetos movie. Yeah. When we saw him in the Hot Cheetos movie, he played a major part too there too. So, you know, seeing this transition of, of you know, people that you work with become friends, become successful. It's, it's a great thing to see. But, you know, but, but, but it goes back to one important thing. What do you bring to the table? In order to establish those relationships, you have to bring something to the table, right? Because you really are who you hang with, right? Tell me who your friends are. I'm going to tell you who you are. So it's very important that, that you bring some type of substance in what you do. That's how, you'll, that's how you'll progress. You know what I'm saying? That's how people will fuck with you. It's not that they're, it's, they're you're using you, but they're not using you. It's just they don't want to waste your time. They waste their time just like you don't want to waste your time, right? So it's like, yes, what you have to offer, what you do, and who you are gets you in through the door. But who you are will basically keep you inside. In that spot. So you guys are throwing one of the biggest events this on the West Coast, maybe in the country this year, UrbanCon 2023. Uh, is this your first event you guys thrown this big? Nah, nah, I don't think we know. We actually had a couple before, but uh, Copion was actually in the business way before all this. Yeah, so, so 
Okay, and okay, in order to get to UrbanCon now, mm-hmm. okay, before Block Report, before the rap thing, before any of this shit, you have to go back to me as a teenager. And I was a gangbanger, slanging dope, slanging heroin, slanging rock. And um, I was on the run. I was absconding uh, from probation. And I was on the run for years, too. So, you know, being the player that I am, you know what I'm saying? I had, I had a cool bunch of girlfriends, you know what I'm saying? I was with this girl, that girl. And then one of these girls, like, I was one time at an, at an illegal um, house party. And there was some raver chicks. So I ended up meeting this raver girl. Now, at this time, I'm slaying rock. I'm slaying rock and I'm slaying heroin. I had just got to Las Vegas. I'm out there slaying dope. I, I, I don't even have nowhere to live. I'm literally living out of Momo's slaying rock. So, so what ends up happening is I meet this girl. Fine. You know, she's wearing fucking fishnet, purple fishnets. Fucking shit that says Skittles on it. Pierced tongue. Crazy ass broad, right? Sexy, raver chick. We hit it off. At the time, I'm living in, I'm living off of, um, I'm on downtown Las Vegas. Before, not the downtown Vegas you know now. I'm like in the downtown, before it got revamped. I'm living out of a Momo sling rock. I'm a young kid. I'm like 17 at this time. And so um, she's into raves. So I start going with her to raves. This is crazy because UrbanCon is coming from this. So I'm going to her raves and I'm and at the time I'm slinging heroin out of balloons. Okay? I'm in Vegas. This is a whole different get down. So you you put them in balloons in your mouth. This way you get pulled over. You just swallow drink water, swallow the fucking dope. And you can throw it up or poop it out. However you That's want. That's game. So I I'm I'm I go to a rave with her. And I'm watching everybody buy ecstasy. Ecstasy is the fucking thing. This is before glass kicked in. Everybody's buying ecstasy. Everybody's buying ecstasy. So then I'm like, whoa, they're so fucking dumb. Like, I'm like, this is stupid. They're buying a pill and they're buying it for 50, 60 bucks. So I'm like, what the fuck is this? So then I get this crazy ass idea. I got like 15, 18 thousand dollars. 17 I'm upscounding I'm in fucking It's just a mess in my life at this point And so This girl goes I tell her And she's like They're going to raves Every weekend Every weekend So I said I get the idea Why don't I Her brother was a big party crew I said Why don't I use her brother And her Weird friends (laughs) To fucking Be the face Of a rave that I'll fund, then I'll get a bunch of crazy ass gang members, homeboys of mine, to be inside of it, slinging my fucking ecstasy. It's a great idea, but I don't know where to get ecstasy. But I come back to Santa Ana. Go to Santa Ana. I'm like, hey, homies, who the fuck do I go get ecstasy from? Nobody has it. So the homeboy comes back. He tells me, hey, dog, you know what? The Asians got it. I go, the Asians got it? They go, yeah, dog. You know, they're all into the rave dance shit, dog. So I was like, well, who here knows somebody in an in a Asian gang? I can't say the name, you know, where I got it from. But so the homies were like, started getting on the phone. And they're like, hey, dog, we found it. So we go to Garden Grove. We pull up into a business. Legit. Asian dudes, dog. Like, like one thing about Asian gang members, dog, you can't tell they're gang members. These fuckers are like in slacks, fucking look like business dudes, dog. Look like somebody's deal, right? A middle-aged man. But this motherfucker's loked the fuck out. Don't get me twisted. They got some young gangbangers that are fucking with it. But the older homies from there, they don't look like that. So I go into a business, and I tell I said, I, I, I didn't know what to do, dog. Like, I was like, shout out to my Asian homies, dog. But I didn't know how to say what's up, dog. I was like, I walked in, I thought I had to say, like, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know, dog, you know? So they were like, 
they were like, what's up, man? What's up? I was like, all right, cool, cool. Okay, shit. All right, we'll do some business. I was like, look, dog, I want an ounce of fucking ecstasy. I was like, that. Bust it out. He nods at somebody. Person brings me a fucking bag of fucking XC. I don't even know if this shit was a fucking ounce. It just looked like a lot of shit. It looked like at least my money was back in that motherfucker, right? So long story short, I'm getting away. I, I get back over there. I end up talking to the brother. We set a big ass rave. It's a massive hit. I got everybody in that motherfucker slinging ecstasy for me. I'm counting how many everybody got a pill, how much I'm supposed to get back, and how much I'm supposed to get. So then... From that moment forward, I got a taste of showbiz money. I was like, wow, if I could just do this for the rest of my life, I'm fucking, I'm, I'm lit, right? I'm it. I don't got to do nothing else. I just got to sling ecstasy inside of fucking raves. That's it. I, I feel, my life's figured out. <laughs> so for the next couple years, I'm throwing events. I'm investing into events. I'm doing other things. And then... Um, and some of them flopped, but I didn't care. I was getting money in different means. But then I started understanding about getting vendors. Then I started understanding about getting venues. Sponsors. Then I started understanding, yeah, getting sponsors. Like, hey, can I put my banner up there? You know, I started understanding that stuff. As I was slanging dope and living out of Momo's and kicking it in the neighborhood and doing all these things, I started understanding that business Little did I know that life was preparing me for Urban Con. While I'm on the run. So, I, so eventually, I go to the pen. I get out of prison. I get out of prison. I'm homeless. I got nothing. This is years, years, years ago. This ain't like last year, two years ago. This is a long time ago, right? Um, I get out, decide to throw an event. It's an absolute flop. I'm not slaying any dope. I just thought I'd throw an event. But the thing was is that I, I understood that your social status matters. Who you are matters. Who you know matters. I did an event. It was an absolute flop. I think that it was at the time I think I called it Hustlers and Divas. I think it was so, so cheesy like that, right? Even had a motherfucking ice sculpture. Watch, everybody's going to come out with ice sculptures now. Ice sculpture, bro. You know what I'm saying? But I had ice sculpture. It was cracking. But it was a flop. Made no money. So I gave up, went to do music. Real friends should tell you when you suck. You know, you don't do good music. I was thinking I was motherfucker. I thought, God damn, I sound good. I sound like 50 Cent. You know what I'm saying? But I don't. I sound like horrible. I was a terrible rapper. But I was trying. I was just trying to figure out my little play in the world. So, all right, let's get away from this. Fast Bam, forward. block report. I get a pomade, a brand. I'm out there doing my thing. I'm all over the fucking United States, different shows. Then as I'm at different shows, I start learning something. I start learning how, I don't want to say boring, but how one, it's like. Look, one event after the next event. It's the like eating, a, eating the same thing every single day. After a while, it's going to get kind of boring. Right? There's, no, there's no real flavor. You already know the flavor you're expecting, how you eat it, how you prepare it, how you drink, how it tastes, how, how much of a shit you're going to take after you eat the fucking sandwich. Right? After a while, it loses its, uh, its kind of like, like having sex with the same woman in the same position over and over and over and over and over. After a while, like, yeah, man, this, we need to go change here, right? So I started going to different events, and, and those were great events. But I started realizing that it needed a little flair. It was, it, was, it was too much salt, not enough pepper. So then, back and forth, back and forth. I'm driving across the country selling my brand. I'm on the, Kix is handling business with Block Report, booking people, doing this, doing that. Kix is still actively, like, like figuring out his thing, putting his brand together. He got his shirts. He's, he's going to the sessions. He's performing. He's doing his thing, right? And so I'm going across country I'm married, I got kids, and I'm living in my car trying to sell my product. With no hair. With no hair. I'm bald headed selling hair care products. 
You know what I'm saying? Do you know how fucking stupid I looked? How dumb I sounded? I even fucking was like, God damn, this is this is fucking really hilarious. But I knew that what I didn't know was it wasn't about that. I was learning the convention business. God was teaching me something. It was one of the conventions you went to. It was one uh, with Jay Majors. Was so, so finally, CT Barber Expo. Shout out Jay Majors. I'm in Connecticut, the biggest barber expo in the world. I'm there in the mix of all the big name barbers, businesses, and brands. And then at that point, I'm, 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 I'm going like two or three times. I meet Jay. Jay was the one that, in, that up until that point, I didn't know that a regular person could do this. I thought you had to be some big ass company. I thought you had to have some millions, major players. Major players. Like if you didn't have like Jay Majors. Now Jay Major. Now here's the thing about Jay that I ended up learning. I ended up becoming, uh, you know, a, an acquaintance of Jay and chopping it up with Jay. You know, and and when she the thing. To Jay to be the biggest fucking barber expo in the world, Connecticut Barber Expo, to be the biggest fucking thing, he had been doing that 10, 12, 13, 15 fucking plus years in a little nightclub to where the biggest brands now call him to be at his show. When I learned that, it was a rap. I was like, I could do the same fucking thing. Now I know it's gonna I know it'll come with a lot of hard work. So watch this. So let's get past all that. I start going to shows and I start realizing, you know what? We need a little bit of this. We need a little bit of that. We need a little bit of this. We we need to create something. So I run it by kicks. So, but before I run it by kicks, I'm in Louisiana. I'm sleeping off the side of the 10 freeway in a swamp. I pulled over into a swamp. At this point. If anybody's ever driven across the United States, you'll understand how bad the mosquito thing really is. So I got I knew to carry candles in the car so I could light the candles so it would make smoke, right? And it would kind of deter the mosquitoes from coming in the car. Because I don't want to sleep with the AC on, the car on. You know, you got to give the car a break too. You just drove fucking half across the United States. You got to turn the bitch off. So I, I pulled over next to a swamp. And I can see the gators and like the sun's kind of going down. And this is a crazy story because I was telling it the other day, but I didn't finish it. So at this point, I'm sitting in the car, the truck in Louisiana next to a swamp looking at gators. And I'm sitting there going, we need, I need to make my own show. But what the fuck would I call it? So I'm sitting there writing. Anybody who knows me knows I carry a pen and paper everywhere. And I and I write fucking random shit in there. I get an idea, I write it down. I don't do it on the phone because on the phone I'll get a phone call, a text, uh, a big booty, a big booty chick will pop up my IG, and I'll get completely distracted, right? So I have to carry a pen and paper so I have nothing to look at but the thought. I write down, Urban Con. Folded it, put it in my pocket, went back to sleep. Fast forward. Three years, four years, up, up until last year. This is like 2018, 2019. Last year, before Urban Con happens. Kix already knows. We already have the convention center coming. We all know this. We've been working on it for a while. We have been working on artists and this and this and that. I'm sitting at the house, pacing back and forth, thinking... I, I don't like the name we had. The first name was the West Coast Barber, Barber Lowrider, Lowrider Expo. Expo. It, it just doesn't. It just doesn't. It sounds generic. It just didn't work, dog. It, it sounded cool at first when we listened to it, but then we're like, uh. It wasn't it. it and wasn't then, he, it. then he came up with that, that crazy well, idea. Well, you well, gotta put it so, so um, what was it? The, um, the crazy idea. The, um, the, the Urban Con. Remember, you're like. Yeah, no, no. But here's, here's how it happened. So I called him. So, okay, watch this. Here's the crazy part. I'm at home. 
pacing back and forth, I got to give the convention center a call. They need the name like ASAP. We're like two months away, three months away. Three months. How you days? I remember Something that. like that, right? And so I'm walking back and forth pacing in my boxers with the coffee and a fucking cup of, and a muscle shirt and a fucking pen. I'm trying to think like, what, what the fuck do I call this? I got to change it. This name's not going to work. So my kids get out of school. Watch this part. I fucking go into into one of the dressers because I got to get dressed. Go get my kids, right? Got, they got out of school already. I go to the dresser. My my a pair of shorts that I hadn't seen in forever were there. I said, oh, fuck, this is my favorite pair of shorts. I put them on. I go to fucking grab my keys and everything, and I go like this. A little ball rolled up in there. And, and it's a paper folded, and I open it up, and it says Urban Con. I look at that bitch and I get the phone and I go kicks. I got the fucking name. He goes, what? I go, Urban Con. He's like, oh, that's hard. We got to run with it. And then I and then I, I called my friend uh, DJ Butterrock out of Atlanta. Shout out DJ Butterrock. Shout out DJ Butterrock, man. I ask him, Butterrock. I got the name, dog. He goes, what is it? I go, Urban Con. Nah, Kobe, that shit whack, man. That shit ain't gonna work. So then I said, for real? He goes, yeah. All right, I'll call you back. And then I sat there, and I prayed on it for a sec. And I said, no, my gut's telling me Urban Con. I get the phone. I call Kitty at the convention center. I said, Kitty, change the name to Urban Con. There we go. And there we go. Urban Con was born. Crazy. And then now we are on our second year. It's going to be the biggest interactive event that anyone's ever been to. I got, well, we got so many pri- uh, surprises for you guys, not even just prizes and stuff to give away, but we have surprises. And the biggest thing about UrbanCon is you never know who might show up. Yeah, that's true. That's, 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 that's true. And you know, um, like the other day, who was it? Ice Cube was looking at homicides, fucking yeah, Instagram Ice Cube, about Ice Cube Con. looked at the event. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's, I've, I've had people uh, on on a lot of our lives that tap, that tapped in. You know, you see everyone's in there. You're like, oh damn, I appreciate you looking at it. You know, but Ice Cube pretty pretty much was a big one that we did run into. Yeah, there, there was a there was a lot of big names. Big There's a lot brands. of models. I'm gonna tell you right now, if you're if you're a videographer, a photographer. Or just in the industry, an artist looking for somebody to be in your music videos, you're gonna find them here. And these are some of the biggest uh, Instagram models you're gonna run into. Uh, you'll run into some of the biggest actors and actresses coming up. These can be the next person to act in your movie, the next person to to take your movie or your or your feature, your skits, something to the next level. You're definitely gonna fall in love at a Rubicon. You're gonna meet your soulmate at a Rubicon. <laughs> and it's gonna be you're brought gonna to you by Modelo. You're gonna, you're your gonna love meet is gonna a, be. You're gonna meet a baby mom there. You might become a baby mom. <laughs> you're gonna meet a baby dad. Whatever it is you're gonna do, you're gonna find at a Rubicon. That's the food con. Um, I saw also too that you guys are sponsored by Modelo this year, which is yeah, fucking huge. that's a big one actually. That was a big, big thing. Um, I got to shout out, you know, honestly, shout out Vadio. Vadio uh, Vadio Seuss. Seuss of Vadio. Now, one thing about Seuss that not a lot of people know, Seuss is a gold record Chicano artist who came all the way out from San Bernardino. He put, he put, he was one of the first leading Chicanos to even get a sneaker deal. Yeah, with Skechers. Yeah. He had a deal with Skechers. And so. As much as you want to say, oh, Skechers is not a big deal, to be Chicano and to be at the time that he was in there. Yeah. To be sponsored by yeah. any type of shoe brand is is an honor. You got to you got to understand. Look at Skechers now. What yeah, no, no. And and he was like that was like the 90s, early 2000, late 90s, 2000, something like that, but you Yeah, know, but man, that guy like the, yeah. he can he can network and I'm gonna tell you when he got he he gave us the crazy idea, let's let's get Modelo. I don't know how to get a Modelo. He don't know right now where we're going to start at. But Vadio just like he just talks to people, and you know this is why he's part of our team, and this is why we we, we consider him part of our team. But we would have never met Vadio had it not been for us doing the block report. Yep. So you see, those connections that came out of there were like, I'm forever grateful to Vadio. The whole pure and cut camp, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, shout they out fuck with cut. us heavy, and we fuck with them back heavy, you know. Um, a, a, like I said. We brought something to the table, and so did they. And together we meshed very well, you know. Um, 
and and Vadio Vadio just like we clicked with Vadio. Kicks had got to Vadio. They clicked. Then Vadio was just a great person. But Vadio was the vessel that got us with UrbanCon. I mean, with uh, Modelo and to Modelo. UrbanCon. So Vadio was the man, and you know we got to thank Vadio for that. Shout Once, out Eddie too, also from Eddie, Eddie and Mike and all them. You know the, those from from the constellations. You know the Reyes Holdings, which own Modelo. You know when when you know Vadio threw it to us, we and swan. then and then we were able to just cash that motherfucker and make it happen. And but shout out Modelo, all in, in shout all out Modelo, yeah, the, know, best, the, the best the best beer, beer ever there. made. <laughs> Modelo's the best beer ever made. You yes. know what I'm saying? Let, let me, you you know, know, if I'm not drinking a beer, I'm drinking some liquid death. You know that. Yeah, you know, um, it's it's important to know, hold on, that Modelo is the best fucking beer ever made. Shout out Modelo. Hey, man, I need one right now. I need Shout a Shout out Modelo. But, for, but on some real, sh on real shit, honestly, Modelo being in, in Arabicon is going to take it to another level. Um, we got liquid death, Red Bull. Uh, Chicano Hollywood backing it up. You guys got Mort Legacy, uh, what's it? Ye uh, Insurance as well. Is it Ye, is it Ye Insurance? It's a Y and E Insurance. Y and E Insurance. You know, and then on top of that, we have um, we have. Okay, here's our sponsors, right? Let's 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 show love to our sponsors. We got Y E Insurance, Evelyn at Y E Insurance, Fabi at Mort Legacy, Fabi at Mort Legacy. You know, we got, um, shout out RTMK. Yeah, RTM. RTM Juan, the whole camp over there. Much love, Trish Rave, all them. Much love to them. Um, Cece the Mamacita. Commitment Soldier. Commitment Soldier. And shout out, you know, Concerts for You, Dave Vegas. David Vegas. David Vegas. You know, that that was the connection that happened with Cece. Um, then you have Ink Junkies with La Bomba Michelada. La Bomba Michelada. You guys have to try that with your That's modelos. That's the bomb. That's the bomb. And then, um, and then you have... Um, uh shit, hold on. Of course, Chicano Hollywood has been a number one backbone with us, supported us. We've been we've been fucking with Chicano Hollywood when Chicano Hollywood had like fucking twenty five followers. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So we fuck with them heavy and they fuck with us heavy in return. Shout you know, out Johnny. Johnny, Albert, all them dudes, man. Um, you know, then you gotta factor in um Chingon the magazine. Yep. Horacio and and, and, and Yesenia. Um, you know, they handle the lowrider aspect for us. Um, the V class. You know, um, I'm I'm hold on, I'm gonna kick myself in the ass. Who else? Uh, Liquid Death came through. That I was, was you know about shout that. shout out my boy Sticks at Liquid Death. You know, Liquid Death was, you know, monumental for us. You know, they were our first sponsor. They were the first sponsor, dog. First major sponsor. And they didn't just sponsor us. With cash, like they actually came and brought a pallet of water, which we gave out at the end of the first. Yeah, Rubicon. we gave it. We used it. As I don't a think display. there was one person that was thirsty there. Like, uh, you know, it. like Liquid Death says, we murdered their thirst. <laughs> Bro, you know when you're leaving, death, you gotta get death it. to plastic, death to plastic. That's Liquid Death saying. But you know, there was so many people involved. Like you know, Urban Con might have been something I created. A name might have been something that. Yeah, I rented the venue. Yeah, I paid for LAPD. Yeah, I paid the permits, the health department permits, the fucking, the fire marshal. Fire marshal charged me fucking, what was it, like, fucking 150 an hour. Had two of those motherfuckers. Bomb sniffing dogs. So much went involved. Yeah, I put that together. But it was the team. It was kicks. It was bam. It was, it was all these individuals. Tony Coda. It was all the artists. L L S R R. It was L two L L two R L two R Concrete. It was all these people. Jenny six nine Gallardo's custom benches. There were all these people that shared the vision, including King Little G, including Namek, including Cowboy, the guy that got shot with well, Nipsey. Yeah, cow yeah, Cowboy. You know, all these people came. The Black Skin. Yeah, all the these Black people came to Urban Con. Lamar got. JR, Play DeVille, all these people. They came together under one roof. And made it made it what it was real. Yeah, I, yeah, I had the idea, but without the love and support from everybody, there'd be no Urban Con. So that's why, you know, 
I, 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 I hate when people bring just me up. Yes, yes, I get it. I understand. But without them, there is no urban con. So it, everybody, everybody played a very vital role here. It's not Kobe on the Mons. It's all of us. Urbicon is for the community. It's for the people. We want to see everybody winning. We want to see everybody there that's going to enjoy themselves. Agent, Slinks, hey. yep. Hazel Eyes, Lottie the G. Um, you got to meet your favorite artist at Urbicon the first year. You got to meet them without even knowing they're going to be your favorite fucking artist. Fucking Chaka. Chaka. Who, you know what? That was a big one. I want to touch base on this. So Chaka, you'll never see Chaka anywhere. Infamous Chaka. He had the biggest run with graffiti in the industry. I don't care who who you could say, he's up there. He uh he himself was hard to get to. Me and Kobion had to go. No, 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 no. Kicks did that. Okay, so he sent me over the profile and I, I reached out to him, but Chaka wouldn't trust you. He would uh he would actually have you go from one message to another message and then write you on text message and write you back on DM to make sure you weren't a cop or someone weird trying to get on there. But once I got that connection with him and we, we sat down, I actually sat down with Chaka and his son. You know, we, we had some pies. We, we, we ate some good food and, you know, we chopped it up. Chaka had a really big vision, you know. And when he was there, to see all the people show him love the way he probably never has seen in a while, in a long time. He had thousands of people at his booth buying product, buying custom-made stuff from him that day. Cause I'm gonna tell you right now, Chaka is gonna go down as a legend. Right now, he's he's going through his his his, uh, his rehab phase right now, and I'm proud of that. I'm proud that he's finding uh, finding some substance in his life and getting some stuff right. But man, when he comes back, he's gonna drop some hard shit, and he will be at the next Evercon after that, I believe. So trust me, like we're gonna be bringing the art, we're gonna be bringing the models, we're gonna be bringing the low riders, we're gonna be bringing the 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 giveaways, the surprise. Guests. You know what? You know what? And that's another thing. That's another thing. And I and I and I gotta touch on that because. And then Funk Freaks, personal Funk favorite freaks. of mine. You know, those are DJs. Those DJs are just personal favorites of mine. But, okay. The women were more of a vital... Look, the women played more of a vital role at Urban Con than the actual men. And I'm going to tell you why. Shout out to all the Instagram models. I love every single one of them, by, by all means. I love them all. And you're single, by the way. I, it's just, if you threw it out there, all right. <laughs> you mentioned the earlier. I, I didn't want to, I, I, you know, you threw it out there. I'm throwing you out of you, dog. Here you go. Yeah, bro, I'm married right now, so that's my shit. I got a pinky ring, not a wedding ring. There you go. All right. But, okay, so um, Show me the, ring. The, the, the thing is, the thing is, is that. The women play such a huge role here because we had a makeup competition. We had the lashes. We had the makeup. We had nails at Urban Con. People looked at me like I was fucking out of my fucking mind. For to involving bring, makeup? For to involving bring makeup. makeup. And then Barbers, the makeup gangster fashion. was the fucking, was the, the, the host, host, you know? And I said, and look, and he, here's the, here was a touchy thing because I heard it. They were like, dog, but he's a, he's a guy and he does the whole drag thing. How are you going to bring that in the Chicano community? I said, look, man, you have to understand here. It's a neutral platform. I'm not going to the left and I'm not going to the right. I'm not here for all that. I'm here for the culture. It, it, what, 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 what somebody does or who they do it or how they do it, that's not my business, man. It's not my place to judge or speak Nobody. or say. That's not my pl position to play. I don't care. That's still a person. You know what I'm saying? And he's cool. And he's a great person. He's an amazing person. And that's exactly what he is. He's a person. And I told the guys, I go, look, homies. You want to know who follows that motherfucker? They go, who? I go, you dumb motherfuckers. All the pretty fucking women follow that motherfucker. <laughs> Facts. So, Facts. fuck yeah, I want him at fucking Urban Con. Because guess, guess who follows him? Not a bunch of fuck. I don't want a sausage fest. Facts. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be nowhere where it's a, call me old fashioned. You know, I don't want to be somewhere where Thank it's you, where it's all where it's all. I don't want to be at a sausage fest. Facts. I want to be where there's women. You know, call me old fashioned, right? But I like being where the women are at. It's me too. I, I just I, I'm old fashioned like that. If I, I had, if I had to choose, definitely 
know, you know what I'm saying? You're going you're gonna to see me where the women are at. You ain't going to see me where the homies are at. <laughs> I'll say what's up on my way to where the women are at, but I'm going to be where the women are at. And, and that's why it was so important to bring women because the IG models are a huge part of the culture. Yeah, the urban community. You will not see a single... If it's not, if there's not a woman at a car show, it's not a car show, dog. Facts. If you go, if you go anywhere and what there's about a not, music video? You, when you go to a music video, if you don't see a woman, you don't see video. dudes dancing in the fucking video, dog. It's it's women. So it was like we have to create a, a, an environment that's inviting to the to the ladies, because we want the ladies there. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody's showing up there with married, and even if you are married. You probably walking around with sunglasses on. You, you want to look? You yeah, know what my, I'm saying? My girl always says you can look, but don't touch. I'm like, right. all right, as long as I can look. I'm so good. it was really important. <laughs> it was really important to I- include the women, make them known that look, hey, Urban Con is for everybody. It's for everybody to enjoy. And keep it, in mind, it's not just you know, women that are models. We actually even got women who are actually rappers, artists, right, right, uh, right, singers. Right. It's more. It's community. more than I can. Yeah, you know. And, yeah, and don't le- think it's just gonna be eye candy. No, and no, they're no, seeing no, successful no, people no, doing no, some no. real stuff. No, le- and let me reiterate that a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yes, there's a lot of models. Probably my favorite part. <laughs> but there, there's a lot of talented musicians. Fucking actresses, producers, filmmakers, directors. comedians, directors. Shout out in Crip. She just did that one with the fucking Canelo on Netflix. You know what I'm saying? So they're a force to be reckoned with. And anybody that doesn't realize that or recognize that, you're 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 fucking you're lame, homie. Because women women contribute so massively. Fuck. Look who's headlining. Fucking look at the fucking uh, our main host. CC the mama. CC the mamacita. She's on 93.5 K Day. Why? Because when it comes to hip hop, she is when hip-hop. it comes to culture, that is CC is that. It's CC and charisma. Honestly, I think it's those two. People it is. It is. And you know, they're, they're, so that's what I'm trying to say. Like, 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 in a male dominated thing, you These know, females stand out. Females low key run shit. The power of a woman is something you can't, you can't break. But and also keep in mind, we also have fashion designers coming in there. Thrift, fast, shout thrifts, out thrifts. Thrifts, one of the Chicano elegance. Yeah, she's one of the biggest. Uh, honestly, in my in my in my mind, she's one of the biggest fashion designers out there right now. And she and I mean, she organized one of the biggest Chicano first like Chicano fucking fashion show here in downtown LA and Nella, over there by Dodger Stadium. I was so impressed. By what she did, that I had to bring her to Urban Con. And she's bringing some mean fashion out there. I'm telling you right now, you do not want to miss that one. Mean, mean firepower. And that's what I'm saying. So, like, it was really important to me to make sure that the women were included in this Urban Con and that they had, like, a really strong voice. Aside from the 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 beauty that is a woman, there's a, there's a major fucking hustle, firepower, brain that... Men could only wish we could tap into. Tap into. What do you think? Who do you think directed Flame and Hot? Eva Longoria. Eva Longoria. I want to talk about a little bit about what the difference is from last year's Urban Con to this year. Are you guys changing everything? Um, what are something that we some things that we can expect? I can tell you right now, it's expect the unexpected. I'm gonna tell you right now. Just know when you even think that we we gave you guys everything, you're not gonna get everything until the day of the show. Um, we have a lot more interactive things going on. So I have a trunk or treat for the kids. I do have a $1,000 burpee contest. Uh, Some people don't know what a burpee is. Tell me more about the burpee and why a burpee contest. Okay. Why is that important can to you, have? Can you, can you show us a burpee? You know what? I can. <laughs> Let me. Uh, let's all do 100 burpees right now. All right, bro. Ready? Uh, we'll, so, we'll, we'll, everyone so, get your 113 so, on right now. So this is the part where you have to follow the OnlyFans for this part. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the thing is with the reason the burpees was so important. Is it's a that big part of the culture, bro. It's a huge part of the culture. And, you know... And we're also bringing health as wealth, remember? Health as wealth. You know, we're stri- we're, 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 we, are, we are talking about more about um, health, right? And so the burpee thing is such a big thing on social media. You know, I see uh, Tough Guy, Cuevas, Burpee King. I mean, there's so many different um, people out there doing it. and Showing so, it on 
I felt that it was something that was needed because it's it's like it's out there and here here let, let, let's be honest with each other prior to this have you guys ever heard of a burpee challenge where you're getting paid at a show never you might see a burpee challenge online you know like there's a, the one never seen it live what is that one that everybody does the kegels challenge the kegel kegels challenge <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> right you see shit like that right the girls you see, like, do the, the ice challenge and all that you like. see yeah you see the fucking the kegel challenge the fucking the the squat challenge the 30 day squat challenge <laughs> <laughs> the one for one yeah a lot of challenges out there but man. you but you know but to see it at a show like recognized as an actual part of the culture I thought it was a pretty fucking deep thing. And keep dog. in mind, you got tough, guy, you got you got tough gym, and Cueva's gonna go at it over yeah, there. Yeah, well, we we still gotta lock them in. We still gotta do a couple things. I know tough guys fucking like a tough guy wants this. Yeah, and I'm telling you, I, if you guys gotta bring that firepower there. Yeah, no, he he. If I had knew this at least two months before, I would have been ready. But he wants to throw this guy in there, you know. So yeah, I think we we got a winner here. Oh yeah, let's get it. But you know, um, again, like it, it's just everything that's the culture. Is at Urban Con. Yep. Podcasts. I can't stress enough the Instagram models. <laughs> the comedians, the actors, the writers, the directors, the rappers, wrestling. Yeah, PCW wrestling. PCW you guys, you guys know Ultra about PCW wrestling? wrestling. I've heard about PCW is huge. They're there. they're doing the rest they're handling the wrestling at Urban Con. And it's gonna be live. So you guys are gonna have a ring in there. Yeah. A ring will be yeah. in there. And me and Kobe on going for the tag team championships. We're we're, <laughs> we're, we're going in there. We're going for gold. You know, you know, and, and there's shit talking and, and there's a fashion show. There's a makeup challenge. There's a makeup battle. A barber battle. A barber battle. A thousand dollar cosplay. A thousand dollar cosplay. That's crazy to me. You're about to see some crazy, uh, some crazy uh, costumes come in there. You're going to see some cosplay going on. Meant, I think it's it's awesome. Urban Con is meant to be fun and it's designed to be a madhouse. Nothing stops for anybody. All this shit's going on at the same fucking time. Live performances, live wrestling, Chicano meet and greets with the best celebrities and influencers. You're going to go and hop on the don't fashion even, Don't get me started. I'll do a fucking hot chip challenge at the motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? The, like, it's it's not meant to. It's, 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 yes, we are to be taken serious, but it's shit that in our culture we find fun. And that's what Urban Con is. It's It's fun. It, it it's meant for everybody. Everybody's invited. Don't think this is Latin Fest 2023. No, you know this is saying? for everybody. Everybody's invited to this. It doesn't matter if you're the Asian community, African American community, the Anglo community. I don't give a fuck if you're Jewish. It doesn't matter what your nationality or background is. This is for everybody. However, it does spotlight. Latino, Chicano, Raza, however you identify, but it identifies what we bring to the cult. Our, 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 Art. our contribution to the urban city life culture. We Ooh. recognize the artistry like that. of city life culture. I feel like, um, in general, like, you know, being Chicano or Mexican American, that's what I am, right? I can, and, but I'm also Latino. Part of our culture is also like being very uh, sharing and welcoming and you know, being part of a community. Sometimes why we get lost in uh, where we grew up and what street we, we live in and we can be, you know, at odds with each other. But in the, in the mo for the most part, for me, like being Chicano, like, you know, we have a community of, of giving and we love to like raise our, our families and we're kind of like family guys at the end of the day. So seeing what you guys are doing right here, it just sounds like such a an event that, that we need right now, especially with so much going on with our culture. Everyone's kind of exploiting us and making fun of, you know, the bad things and, and taking right. us for kind of for granted. So, you know, you guys putting all this together really shows the power of unifying all the aspects, like you said, of Chicano, barbering, low writing, uh, rapping, acting, all the shit that we've been killing for years. Right, now you can all right. find it in one place. But where is it going to be at and how do we get tickets? Ontario Convention Center. It's going to be Sunday, October 22nd, 2023. It's from 12 p.m. to 7.30. Get your tickets online on Eventbrite. Just search up U-R-B-A-N-C-O-N. You'll see us on there. Urban Con 2023. And, you know, here's a here's a cool thing about Urban Con that 
Urban Con's not going anywhere. Nope. Urban Con's here to stay. I've been calling it Food Con. You know what I'm saying? It's AKA Food Con. But Urban Con will continue to get bigger. Push the boundaries. So, you know, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Urban Con's coming. Phoenix Convention Center, Urban Con's coming. El, El Paso, Paso, Texas. Houston, Texas. New York, Urban Con. Miami, Miami Urban Beach, Con. Urban Con. As it progresses, it will it will it will adapt to its environment, right? How we get down on the West Coast is not how they get down in Miami. Or the right? East Coast. Or the East Coast or whatnot. We recognize that. However, there's still a big Latin market in that area that get down like us in their fashion. So we're coming. Just be ready. Just be ready. Just be ready. And they're lined up. It's not like, oh, it's hopefully. It's not just talking. You know, we got maybe. it. Maybe. No, at this point, if we haven't showed you with the Los Angeles Convention Center and now the Ontario Convention Center that we ain't fucking around, I don't know what else to fucking tell you. Because Everyone. we're not fucking around. It, it's it's coming It's and we're going state to state Seattle. We're coming to Seattle Convention Center. I was just looking at the motherfucking Anchorage Fucking uh, convention center last night, you know what I'm saying? Shout, we, out, shout out to Alaska. Sh- shout out yeah. to motherfucking Alaskians, whatever they call themselves. <laughs> you, know what As- you know what I'm saying? Eskimos. Because Eskimos. guess what? Eskimos. Whatever the fuck they do over there, that's what we're gonna do over there. But we're gonna come over there. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna I, come with. We're gonna come with pride and look, help. We're going to Brazil. We're going to Japan. We're taking Urban Con to Japan, Okinawa. I'm excited for this one. Puerto Rico, San oh. Juan. Don't ask, don't tell me why. I think you guys get an idea why Rio de Janeiro, San Juan. That's my, I'm looking forward to. Kobe but is an exotic person. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just like, you know, different tastes. You know what I'm saying? You like what you like, dog. I like what I like, dog. <laughs> I don't always want to drink tequila. Sometimes I want rum or, you know, all this shit, you know, other. Flavors, but what I'm trying to say is, Urban Con is here to stay. Is here to stay, and it's what we have. And just when you think you've seen it all, that like no way these fools can just come out with nothing crazier. Believe me, we got a whole lot of more fucking crazier ideas that will be unraveled as we go. And you can guarantee you will never be able to expect what will come with like he said it just expect you unexpected. expect unexpected never know who's gonna be there but also wait till you see the trophies oh yeah I we, if, we, we, if, we trophies. Didn't, if we didn't fuck you up last year with the trophies we gave out plaques we gave out lowrider packs plaques as an award you had never seen that prior to us i can't give it away yet but in about a, about a, about a few weeks you'll see them in a couple in about two weeks you're gonna see the fucking trophies and you're gonna be like god damn these motherfuckers just they had I, to I, do it it was something you had never ever seen as a trophy everything about urban con has to be unique why because everybody's watching everybody's watching everybody wants to watch it fail it's like watching a Mayweather fight you just, just hopefully this is the one he goes down but the thing is is that the reason why we can't go down is because the culture got us. Mother, God got us. Yep. Amen. Who did? God, God did. God did. <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely want to talk about, like, you guys not only have huge famous artists, huge famous models, huge famous companies. I've also seen an influx of, you know, not low level, but mid Mid-tier. Independent, independent. It, thank you. Let me say that again. You've I've definitely seen an influx of independent artists who maybe don't have the hugest platform, but you guys decided to open up your platform to these mid. Uh, I keep saying mid to these independent artists. Why are you doing that, and how can an independent artist get on the platform? That will, that's easy. So here, here's here's what I think people need to understand. The big name artists are great. Awesome. Awesome. But guess what? They're not a big deal no more. Because I can see you at every motherfucking show. There's about a million different interviews and podcasts about you. There's all kinds of fucking shit about you. But, pay but then you look at the motherfucker like, 
Namek. Got an amazing fucking flow. Signed to Ice T. But you wouldn't fucking know that. Unless you you don't you don't see him. You, he does shows. Don't get it twisted. This motherfucker always doing shows. But you don't really get a chance to interact with him. On that on that type of level. On that yeah. type of level. Lamar Perez. Dirty Bird. Shout out Dirty Bird. Extremely fucking talented from Inglewood. Signed to Rancho Humilde. But you wouldn't know that. There's all these different artists that I go, this motherfucker's dope. This motherfucker's bad. But nobody gives them a fucking opportunity. We don't give them an opportunity. Our own people ain't going to. It's like starting a podcast. Nobody wants to come on your fucking show because nobody fucking knows you. So how do I know your podcast ain't going to be the next big fucking thing? I, I see your vision. I see the talent. I hear the talent. So how the fuck am I going to do a big ass event, claim that it's about the culture, and not put the fucking actual people who push the culture on the motherfucker? Preach. So I said, fuck that. All y'all motherfuckers out there with big ass fucking names and big ass eagles, great, amazing, did your job. But you go over there. You, you remember, you don't fuck with us, remember? We ain't shit. All right. But all these other motherfuckers over here who are independent, come on, man. We fuck with y'all. Y'all fuck with us. We are the culture. You do not ever turn your back on the people that support you. The people that fuck with you and the people that even put you on in the first goddamn motherfucking place. Remember your position. You start getting too big. All right, homie, kick it over there. Cool. We'll forget about you in a year. But all these other motherfuckers are hungry and coming for you. That's what we want. So Urban Cons, for those people that don't get those opportunities to be on a major platform, we give you a platform. You know, to say we're major, I, I, you know, I'm just being humble about it. I'm not saying that we really are major, but we don't do consider co- ourselves I, I major because, you know, the, the culture does see it as a big event coming. Right. So to give you a platform to go and lay down your music, your best of the best, you have three to five minutes to lay it down. You're going to capture all these fans. All, now the Chicano community, the people that are in there, anyone that's there gets a chance to hear your music directly from you, get to attach themselves to you, no, they yeah, just that. want. They just want. They just want to take a picture with you. That's they just it. want to tag you. They want to just take a picture with you and say, "Hey, dog, I was here. I was here. I fuck with you, dog. You're from San Bernardino, dog. You're from fucking Southgate. You're just Home, like me. You're just like me, dog. And but but you'd be surprised. Don't let us get fucking too big, because then I'll start. I'll, I'll I'll remember that some of these conversations will come back out, and I'll be like, oh, oh, you want to be at UrbanCon this year, huh? What happened? You didn't want to fuck with us last year. You, you left want, us hanging you last want year. Something about last year, uh, you know how hard it how hard it was for me to set that lineup up the right way. I had a, a total of fifty artists that said yes. At the end of the day, when I came, when it came down to the last two days, only thirty two made it. Thirty two out of fifty. And guess what? We got a blacklist. And it's not due to us. You know, we respect your decision. If you wanted to go your way, did what you did. But we see how you interacted with it. You were, were about it. But since it was the first time we were ever throwing it, no one believed in this. No, no one believed nothing. that. Dog, you're gonna people laughed at us, homie. Oh, yeah. When we, when, whenever I brought it up, especially, you remember, small minds will kill big dreams. Remember that. 100%. We went to a lowrider show one time, and we were handing out this before COVID. Oh, yeah. We were handing out fucking flyers. Did you go with us on that one, or was it? It was. It was yeah, it was all of us, right? We handed out flyers. You know motherfuckers threw the flyers on the floor? Took the flyer from our hand, looked at it, and fucking laughed and threw it on the ground. So for now, all the like dog, me and Kicks, bam, we don't we don't look at this like, oh my god, we're this monster that's coming. Dog, we're sitting here like y'all going, oh shit. We're having fun. We're having fun. We're just having fun with it. But don't think that we didn't forget those people that threw the fucking flyer in our face. Don't think we forgot all those motherfuckers that left us hanging. Told us no. Or how many followers you got? Oh, this is your first annual? Oh, okay. Well, nah. All right, homie. Cool. And some of those motherfuckers came back. Hey, dog. Hey, Hey. what's up, homie? Hey, dog. It fucking blew up. Can I get on? (laughs) Eat a dick. (laughs) 
Because you know, yeah. you know what, dog? Keep that same energy, Keep homie. that same energy, homie. But going back to your question, like you said, how can artists go ahead and hop on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at this point right now, we're in the 30-day mark. Um, I say every time before an event, never hit up 30 days before. But I do have a few slots that are available that will come to light. Um, those opportunities will be put out there on UrbanCon. So if you're following the UrbanCon page, the Block Report page, or me, Kobion or Bams, you'll get the you'll get the announcement. And and, uh, and let me and let me tell you something. Let me tell let me let me let me. Uh, and this is important to know because this is this is something I need to go back on because this shit pisses me off because we 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 put a lot into this for people to consider us what we are now. Like we're all shocked. Don't think that we sit around and going ha 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 and fucking. Told we you think, so. Yeah, we think this is big dick. No no no. We're not. We're over here like. We're like, wow, right? We can't believe the way people ref- refer to us now. But even if you're an artist and you can't get on the lineup this year for whatever reason, fuck with us. There's Stu- more shows go- coming. Still go to Urban Con. Facts. Fucking take a picture. Show us that you were down so that next year when we're doing Urban Con again and we're trying to figure out, hey, who should, put, who should we put on? And Homeboy goes, hey, dog. I went to your show last year. I supported it. Can you I know get a what, You know what we're going to do? Give homie a slot. And Kobeon's but, like that, bro. Kobeon will hit me up. People are like, hey, man, put this, guy, this guy was here last year. He showed so much love. Put him on, please. And but, I'll, I'll do it. Everything goes through me, like he said. Uh, when it comes to artist lineup, anyone that wants to be on the artist lineup, hit me up. Official underscore kicks the legend. Uh, and, you know, we, we'll get something worked out if we can. If not, like Kobeon said, come to the event. Show your support there. us, support. dog. Support us. Support is how you want us to support you, but you couldn't support us, and you know good and goddamn well Urban Con's coming this year. What you gonna tell me? How? What you gonna tell me? Why you go? You better if you don't got the cash. Fuck it, fine. Share the goddamn flyer. You don't think I see? I check all those damn DMs. You know, it's it's important. Like we show support, dog. I'm at every car show, every event. I'm at all these fucking things, walking around. Enjoying buying micheladas, buying tacos, buying shit from the vendors. Why? Because I support the culture that I put on. So I it, it doesn't it doesn't seem well to me when like if you, you gotta support you like practice what you preach. Or just reciprocate. Sometimes yeah. I feel like, you know, even on Instagram, like I've even if I don't like a certain thing that you're doing, but I follow you, you're the homie in some sort of way, I'm going to double tap and give you a like and leave a comment. It's and free. I, and I feel like some people take it so like, I don't like nothing or I'm too cool to like your shit. To oh, share my your God. Shit. You know what, uh, dog? You know, you know hey, what? Hey, it, hey, can, can oh, oh, my God. Views? Oh, my God. How many views do you get compared to the likes and the t- and the likes, the shares? How oh, many yeah. views do you get? It's like four to one, dude. Okay, so look, you'll get 4,000 views, right? 12 likes. <laughs> oh, no, people, for a long time, I would post something. I'd be like, "Kids, what the fuck?" He showed like, me, bro. I like six hundred, six, six seven hundred views, two, two likes. likes. <laughs> I like, God damn. Like, I'm the, probably the See, nicest person. Know. I'm the nicest person you will ever come. I'm fair. I, I, I'll fuck with you. I'll support you. But f- I, like, I don't know. Like a lot of people, like I felt like this like thing towards me, and I'd be like, "What fucking? What did? What did I do? But just try to fucking do something. I didn't step on anybody's toes. I didn't." drag anybody down this whole goddamn time throughout this whole fucking endeavor from back in the day from slaying rock i did this shit solo independently just figuring it out maneuvering myself through all these different fucking circumstances you know what i'm saying so it's like i don't hate on nobody so when i see something against me i think to myself dog i don't you don't even know me a lot of the artists that wanted to perform at Urban Con last year. Um, you know, we didn't want to do the re- the same artist again, right? Every year is going to be a new it gotta opportunity be, gotta be for changed. everybody. It Keep in mind, you're allowed still there. You're still allowed there as an artist to come through. We'll, you, we'll, we'll give you a free pass to come to Urban Con because you were with us last year. But I, We're I got, actually even giving away tickets, actually, right? We're giving some yeah, tickets we're giving away some with, tickets. Of, should we give away some tickets to somebody watching right now? Yeah, yeah you know, yeah. you know what? But hold on, hold on. There's some, there, but there's somebody that I got to recognize. Cause Tony Coda did it today. Look how look how much. We weren't gonna bring back any of the people that performed last year. But we fuck with Tony. But you wanna know why we fucking you know why I fucking Tony 
came back on again. We fuck with them. We like him. He's the homie. We fuck with Tony Coda. But Tony Coda even puts our shit in his bio, dog. He puts Urban Con in his bio. Like, like to somebody like us who like we're surprised anybody even fucks with us, is like, hey dog, you're the homie for life. Cause you don't gotta do that. It's hard, like we said, just to get a fucking double tap. But Tony goes, put that shit in my bio, dog. Promo, promo, promo. Like I, Hazel I Eyes. Hazel Eyes did the same thing. Yep. There's, you know, you know, Lottie has, the G. Lottie the G. I mean, th- these people go, dog. We fuck with y'all, and they support us, and 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 we do the same thing in return. Like we're not better than anybody. We're nobody. We're nothing. We're simply fans of our own culture, trying to make it. Let's give away some tickets, dog. Okay, let's give away some tickets. What let's should they com- what should comment or what should they do? Share, share. I something? say, you know, look, look, the hundredth comment that tags at Urbicon at the lit outlet at Kobe on the Mons official kicks. Under- Tag the uh, hottest Instagram models to fucking <laughs> official Kobe on the Mons page, legend. not the Urbicon page. <laughs> Kobe on the Mons page. He needs direct contacts. He needs he needs he needs a number and an yeah. email. And your most recent photo, no makeup. Yeah, no makeup. <laughs> no, 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 no. I like the makeup. Me. <laughs> All right. Sure. So no, look, no. What, what we'll really do is hundredth comment on your YouTube. Whoever does it, I'll give you a pair of tickets. Dope. And you'll get early access to get in there before. So as the doors open at 12, you can be there by 1130. Okay. Walk in and see the event for yourself. Tell a friend to tell a friend. You guys heard yep. it right now. So, but you um, need to tag two people in there as well. Okay. So if you're on Spotify listening, go over to YouTube. If you're on Apple uh, Podcasts, go over to the YouTube. If you're on uh, the Patreon, our Patreon members, make sure you guys go on the YouTube channel. Leave a comment. Tag two people. Hundredth comment. Get two free tickets. Um, is, are you guys selling different level tickets? Is there different prices? No, right, now, right now, it's all general admission right now. Um, only special passes are for the celebrities, artists that are coming in. But we do have we do have some that are gonna be released soon that will hook you guys up. Right. You know, and 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 here here's the thing, man. Here's the thing, here's the thing with that. And we've been kind of on the fence about that with the special passes. Because although the goal here is ultimately to make some money too, right? However, We look, man. Times are hard for everybody, dog. It, it, you know, I went to the motherfucking store today. You know what I'm saying? Your boy like T Bone and steak and eggs. You know what I'm saying? And motherfucking T Bone went from fourteen dollars to motherfucking nineteen dollars. You know what I'm saying? I I recognize that. You know, Inflation. shit's not ex- expensive. So, so I I the reason we don't have the different tiers is because we know that. Like we're not trying to sit here and rape everybody financially, dog. We we want to make some money so we can put on another urban con. And and you know, dog, we go to the events. We gotta drive. We gotta do this. We gotta do that. A lot goes into this. So it, that's why I buy merch from vendors. This is why I, I I share. I like. I purchase. I do whatever I can because when it's when it's your turn, dog. One dollar means the fucking world. I think people forget the value of money. I think people don't realize. Go ask an Uber driver how hard it is to make 25 fucking dollars. Go ask a DoorDash person how hard $25 are to make. So I'm not blind to that. And I recognize that shit. So therefore, I think, to be honest with you, we've been, there is no special tier tickets now. And more than likely, I'm, we're probably not going to do it. Because we're about the culture, and one thing we're not for the culture is being a vulture and fucking and 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 fucking nickel and diming everybody. If you got more money, guess what? You're gonna stand in line just like every motherfucker else who ain't got no motherfucking money. Because Urban Con is not about egos and fucking. Hey, dog, I got cut straight to the line. Urban Con's about the fucking culture. So sit your ass in line like everybody else. That's fucking dope. I can't wait, you know, to see how the event comes out this year. But definitely some 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 of us that uh, want to be in your shoes that we are like looking up to you guys definitely want to know like the ins and out when it comes to the business aspects. Um, what are some of the things that people don't think about when it comes to like 
getting such a huge event, putting all these sponsors together and throwing a, like throwing the huge event. What are some of the things that gets overlooked that are super important? The insurance. Okay. So rule number one of business, you're never going to do business in your name. That's rule number one. So first thing you need to do is go get an S Corp, C Corp, or an LLC. First thing you need to do. But before you do that, you're going to create a trust. And that trust is going to create the LLC. You go, okay. And I get it. This con- this kind of conversation can get kind of a little bit confusing. Because you hear those names all the time and you go, but I don't know how to do this. And, right, and, right. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You're talking all this shit, but it, it doesn't, it sounds foreign to me. Completely understand. That. That's, okay. that's what I want to ask you. Like how, what, who, where, why. This is, so what you need to do is, this is going to require a little money. Um, and you don't have to pay it all in one shot, but you're going to have to get money. Okay. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go find an attorney that handles LLCs, patents, trademarks, shit like that. They are the ones that are going to do that for you. You're going to go to the attorney and go, Hey, I want to make a trust fund. And then he's going to charge you for that. Then you're going to tell him that you want to, a tr- the, that you're controlling the trust fund for the LLC or the S Corp or the C Corp. That's a little bit more complicated, but it's about taxes. Right. It's how you're going to form your taxes. If you do an S Corp in your taxes, then you require to do a fucking a CEO, a COO. You know, you got to do you got to do a hierarchy of positions, VP. You know what I'm saying? You got to do all these different. Can you put yourself in all of them? You can. You can put yourself at all of them. And, and some people starting off, yeah, they do. That's why they have the title CEO. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like me, I'm by myself. That's all right. I, you know, so right. I so, would probably do it all myself. But I would not recommend to do an S Corp. I mean, it, it's, it comes down to personal things, but I would just tell somebody to do an LLC. All right. So you went to an attorney. You did a trust. Now you're going to pay for him to do an LLC. Limited liability company. The problem that you're going to do not do that until you're making money. Because if you're not making money and you go and you do that, you're going to owe the state of California $800 minimum every year. every year. California and New York are the only state that charge that much. I think Montana's 45 bucks. That's why you see a lot of people like uh, move out of state and do business here. Or like they uh, they do business, have a home office in like Montana or Wyoming. Florida. But they're really out here. They're really out here because they're claiming that's where they're doing business. And at. they have like a digital address or something. Right. Some they got a. Uh, Which is a whole different thing. It, it, but no, but it, that falls into that. Okay. All right. So you did that. You you went to the IR, the attorney went to the IRS and got you an EIN number. Right. Yep. Now you got your articles. Of, of, of incorporation. So now you're going to take those articles. Now the articles, it's basically a paper saying, hey, you are a business. Now you're going to go to the bank, whatever bank of your choosing, and you're going to open up a bank account. So now you got a bank account. You got your fucking LLC, S Corp or C Corp, whichever way you went. And you're going to have, so once you have that, you have that, now you're ready to enter into contracts. Now venues of larger statues, say like the forum, is saying, "All right, you're real. Come on." Yeah, you're talking to the. Yeah, you call them up. You call the sales manager. You send them your information. Have you ever done this? No. Okay. Uh, you're 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 a noob, right? So they're gonna fucking treat you as you know, like, well, how much money you got? What are you trying to do? All that kind of shit. When you do your contract, Business 101, you will never do business under your name. You will do business under the company's name that you have picked. In the event that there's a mass shooting, in the event that there's something go horribly wrong, God forbid, you can, in so many words, rip it up and you walk away clean and clear like nothing ever happened. And this is actually what happens with major companies too. Disney, everyone does it. Yeah, they'll do they'll do something like along the lines with smaller names, 
try something out, doesn't work, they let it go, they walk away and this how the rich get rich. And they go and open up another LLC S Corp or C Corp. Have you ever seen like a business do that like where they'll have their name as, oh, you know, Sergio's plumbing and then the next thing it's it's Palomar's plumbing, but it's the same person. So, 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 so now the part that you got to figure, like, like now you get the venue. Now the hard part is you got to get companies to believe in you. But you're a first timer. Nobody want to fuck with you. Who are you? The problem is, is that you're swinging too high. Come back down. Go to Miguel's fucking, fucking, uh, fucking Mariscos. Go to fucking Don Juan's fucking bar. Go to the little homie who sells fucking, you know, has. Go to the, the, the businesses that you can speak directly to the owner. Those are the people, if you tell them what you got going on. On a low level sponsorship, you will get them to in, invest in you. Now you're gonna take their money, you're gonna use their name, you're gonna bring it to your event, and you're gonna bring all the cool, all as much as all the cool people you know. This is why relationships matter. This is why it's important to be nice. Cause dog, I can't stress this enough. Me kicks. And bam, would not be shit. We're still not shit, but we wouldn't even be this shit <laughs> if we weren't nice to people. Right. Nobody likes a bad guy, dog. We we like bad guys in the movie, but that's just in in a movie. In real life, nobody likes a bad person. So relationships matter. Relationships matter, dog. You gotta be nice to everybody. I don't care the background, ethnicity, color, sex, lifestyle, culture. I don't care. Be nice. A smile will get you further in life than a fucking frown. And you know how many business owners liked me as just a person? God damn. Smile kicks. Look at that motherfucking smile, dog. Yeah, you know how many motherfuckers <laughs> fucking said, you know what? Take my goddamn money, man. <laughs> Take my goddamn yeah, yeah, money. It's a, it's a smiley emoji. It, but, but, but kicks is a salesman. This is why kicks. I un- Look, I'm creative. I know business. But I hate business. Kicks knows, Bam knows. I hate talking. I I've been on the business talking. platform of that. I actually, have, like I was telling you earlier, he's all business. Ten years. I went. Uh, I went from door to door knocking. I went door to door knocking to business to business, to retail, to going back into the car business to bike sales. I think the only sales I haven't done is real estate. But each time I learned something new. Each taught me a different thing. Did you know, you know, you're more inclined to want to buy a bike than you are to 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 buy a car, right? Average man will walk into a bike shop, look at that shit for fucking four or five months. Won't buy it right away because they're scared of the wife. I've seen people sell their RVs that they're living in to get a bike. And it's just the, art, the, the, the talk. You got to talk someone in from their emotions, from the business part of it to their emotions. Like, what, what's driving you to come over here? Business and, is, I would say business is literally... I would say, aside from the numbers, it's all emotion. Psychology. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's yeah. how you also, also, too, carry yourself. How we carry ourselves right there. You know, um, Urban Con, if you believe in something, especially like your friend, when, when they're, sa- they're saying, I'm going to do this, you know, that little belief that you give your friend can take them an extra step further than you saying, man, you know, you're kind of, it's, it's, it's too old, bro, right now. It's about the time. You know, just why don't you just focus on doing something else. That little bit right there will take your friend from being up here to down here if you do that think about how good a compliment feels right when people comment on something and they and they uh, something you did and they comment on it it feels good man there's there's something about people taking a moment to say hey that looks really good or i haven't you ever been around a woman and a woman goes wow you smell really nice you walk away like you're player Smiling. of the year. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is why Kobe that bitch just told you you had the biggest dick in the world. All the comments on all the Instagram models, com- all the comments on Instagram models are all Kobe on. Yeah, Every single one of them. I fuck right? with the vision, my boy. You know what I'm saying? You you just gotta be nice, dog. People like nice people, dog. Like, don't be afraid to compliment people. And when you're doing, and when you're, and when, like, support who support you. Facts. So. Go smile the, more than you smile so, more than if uh, you're gonna get further with the smile dog, than you are with a stale face dog yeah. look it wasn't my handsome looks that got us this far my boy <laughs> damn bro you, you get more with but let's say you got more uh you get more more honeys with with sugar 
You get more. I don't know. This is the same. But you got the paperwork. You got the venue. You talk to the person. You got the venue. Um, what's after? The, once you talk to the venue, lock down the venue. What's next? So then, of course, you you have to understand what is the reality of the type of vendor sponsorships you can get. Now, as a vendor, you're not gonna go get six, seven, eight hundred bucks for vendor. Be like, dog, I'm gonna put forty vendors in here, and everybody's gonna give me a thousand bucks. No, 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 no. It's not gonna work that way. You're gonna get 150 bucks, 200 bucks, right? Um, you also have to. This is also one thing you do have to touch on too. You have to have a vision. You got to know exactly what market you're yeah, getting into dog, you, you, before you even you, start dog, building it. You have to have an idea. Like, like, like I want for example, this. like you're doing urban com, but you have nothing but Indian food vendors. You're gonna be like, what the fuck? Like, does, more, it doesn't match. Right, Make sure that that matches right. with it. But and then you can tell. You can tell when somebody's generic. Have you ever gone to an event? And nothing there really matches with the actual event. Mm -hmm. You, like, you're at a fucking show, right? And then there's, like, some odd vendor that doesn't really relate to the world that you're there, right? I gotta gotta be careful what I say here because I don't want to come off the wrong way. Yeah. But, you know, there's some things that make no sense being there. Now... That doesn't mean that's a bad idea. But you want to kind of keep it relatable to your demographic target market. But also, audience. too, like, I've been to a venue where, like, it's nothing but birria tacos. It's like, that you also... Well, yeah, you know, keep yeah mind, that's true. Keep mind, it might be, <laughs> that's true. It that's might true. be a birria event. You never know. But yeah, yeah, when, yeah. It, no. when it comes down to... There's it, a night market mm-hmm. in downtown where it's like, there's like six vendors and there's like a total of 20 of them and six of them are birria. Okay, I'm okay. Like, oh, I, mix I, it up. I gotta... I can't, okay. So there's a sweet spot you're saying. Let me tell you something about UrbanCon. There's a reason why there's not a website. It's for that reason alone. You cannot go and just say, I'm going to be a... A, a fucking vendor at UrbanCon ask every single vendor that has hit me up and my first question to them is what do you sell if, if I get five if I start getting more than two or three of the same shit thank you I'm cool yeah, I, I appreciate two, you two should be fine two to three should be good and they're all and, separated and separated <laughs> yeah. yeah that's why at UrbanCon I filter out who is selling at my event? Look, I love the swamp meat, but I'm not going to charge you 50 bucks to come to the convention center to go to a swamp meet. Right. So I have to be careful who's coming in that door. I don't just let anybody come in through that door to come sell because, again, the quality matters to me. Aside from the quality, forget the people. Forget all that shit. Remember, one important thing out of this whole conversation is that I was a vendor going to events, selling at the swap meet, selling at car shows. I was that person, too, paying six, seven hundred dollars. I'm not going to say the show to be tossed way in the fucking back and all the fucking stage and all that shit's in the front but because i didn't have a thousand dollars to give you you threw my ass in the back and put all the action over there and i'm just sitting over there alone alone it's not selling shit and that's a, that's the a reality of some vendors that's it no, that and, hurts and, and, so you're saying you keep that in mind when you start when you set up the venue 100 you lay out, motherfucking you lay out, percent you want to make sure everyone gets a fair shot as 100 motherfucking and keep in percent mind, these vendors you're going to see at UrbanCon, they're one of a kind a lot of these vendors have their own companies that they're starting bringing up and this is this is where we come in to give the opportunity to opportunists uh you know this is Kobe on giving you a, a platform to go ahead and market your your brand your your product what you want out there you know uh that, that that's something we do do need to highlight you know it's important it's just important dog because it like i don't like i hate egos yeah. i hate you want to get on my bad side start talking to me about money you want to want to lose me real quick I love money. I love money more than the next motherfucker. But if the conversation is 100% money and you cannot get off that subject and this is all you this is what drives you, I don't want to fuck with you because you are that rattlesnake that I'm fucking watching for because you're just looking to kill me as soon as you can. 
Let me pick your brain. 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 Okay. He turned around. Kill him. Yeah. So that's a huge red flag. You want to get on my good side? Do not talk about money. Let's talk about something dope we could do. Money will follow. Building. Building. Establishing. Money comes. Tell dog. me your dreams. Tell me your aspirations. Where you want to be at. What are you looking to do with it? That's what we want to do. Don't hear. measure. Do not measure success by money. You will never be satisfied. You will never be content. It's like, again, I don't mean to use a woman for this one. But in a relationship with a woman, it cannot be a sexual thing. Otherwise, it will get boring and old and there will be no substance and you'll move on. Yeah. There has to be some real connection. So, again, a common goal. So, again, in business, there has to be a common goal. Again, doing what we do, what we have built, has to be about really what we preach. And that is culture. No egos having a good time. And everybody else who fucking has grown to think they're better than the culture, nobody's bigger than the culture, homie. No one's bigger than the program. Nobody's bigger than the program. That's the fucking fucking prison saying. Everybody's going to do the same shit. If you think you're that badass, get your ass over there. And here you guys can go be a hateful bunch of motherfuckers. Yeah, over go there. run your own program. Go run there. your own program. But you're not wanted here. So we got the paperwork. We got the venue. We got the vendors. Make sure it's not the same vendor. Make sure it makes sense. What's next? You make sure when you're writing, especially because I know one of the things you want to see is about like sponsors. Make sure when you're writing uh, a sponsorship, you know, say you wanted to, to approach them. Make sure you approach them in the right way. Make sure that your punctuation's on right. Make sure what you're saying makes sense to them on their aspect. And always keep in mind that what's it's not what's benefiting you. What benefits can you offer them? Right. Because then that's what they're mm. going to come back to. You. Right. That's they're, a bar. That's something I want, something I want to ask. Like, what's your uh, sales pitch to like a huge company, let's say Modelo, Red Bull, whatever it is? Like, what are you offering them to say yes to you? Like, oh, I, I can get this many people will be here. Like, what, what's, what's the sales pitch towards them? Hmm. I want to say honestly it's not really a sales pitch it's just we give them like this is our vision this is where we're going with it um you know we hope that you yourself see the same vision that we see and we think that your brand fits with that how can we go ahead and mutually both benefit off this what can i do f to help you out on that end because it, let remember, me it's a, help it's a you big, help me help you yeah, so as remember <laughs> right. so remember like he said it's what it's not what you what you take it's what you reciprocate what you give back to me? You you got you gotta basically you when you're dealing with any sponsor, okay? You're not gonna get to Modelo, you're not gonna get to fucking Liquid Death by saying, "Hey, what's up, homie?" <laughs> Sponsor uh, my event. It was good. Che che hey, check it out, G. Check it out, G. <laughs> check it out, G. You know, right hey. now, dog, my <laughs> views are getting about five hundred, seven hundred in the story, dog. You know what I'm saying? And um. I can boost you, dog. Well, I boost all my ads, dog. <laughs> you know, you you you're not uh, that you you're not. Again, remember this is what I said in the beginning was, what is it that you're bringing to the table that makes you valuable? I said that in the beginning. In the relationships, we brought something to Modelo that was valuable, and what was that? That was culture. We are the culture. We didn't have to fake it. We didn't have to make it up. We were just us and said, look, um, hey, Modelo, this is what we got going on. Modelo was like, fuck yeah. Sounds great. This yeah. isn't, you guys are exactly, one of, you have to understand that in order to be great, in order to be successful, you're going to look stupid. Why? Because God didn't give you that. Give those other people your vision. You only have your vision. Nobody. You go explain your dream to somebody and it sounds like gibberish. The reason why he failed, I failed, was I personally believe that in the midst of our journey, in the independent individual journeys that we were going through, we were failing. Because at that time, we were really learning to get to the point that we are. Once we got together and we started like understanding and growing and doing things together, 
we had taken so many L's that by the time, and, and when I say L's, I don't mean losses. I mean learning. Lessons. lessons. By the time we got together and we started doing our thing, it was like we were just unstoppable with my creativity, my understanding of business, his ability to sell, negotiate, and conduct business together. We're unstoppable. We're unstoppable. You, there's, there's nothing you we can't, can't do. fuck with us. And we get it. But, but we do recognize one important thing is how important we are to each other and BAM is to us and everybody around us. This is not this is this is not a this I do not, it by myself. Yeah, it's not a Kobe on show or a kicks show. This is not just us, it's us as together as a team. And you know, uh if it's us going back and forth with each other with ideas. Right. It's Kobe Beyond's constant creativity that's showing out and, and giving us that, hey man, this would be a great idea. Let's run with it. And and kicks no because kicks go I go, kicks, you handle all the talking. Let me just handle the business. Let me just let me I sit dog. You wanna know my favorite word? No. <laughs> Look, I, I it, it, it's crazy. I I walk outside in my boxers, in coffee, in a muscle shirt. The neighbors look at me. They're all used to me now. But I walk around up and down the street in my boxers and a muscle shirt and chanclas. You about to have ten models with coffee. Your house. With coffee, thinking the next thing. I will devote a whole day to how and what we will do how we will shoot our next interview where we will shoot our interview once i process that and i build it and i put all the pros and cons i call kicks kicks i got it all right i need you to call so and so all right boom and he takes it from there it's just it's just it's, just, it's knowing it's like having each other dog you just gotta have each other's back and, and, you, and you run with it man remember in this life you're gonna have people that are gonna lead and people that are gonna go ahead and, and follow, and if you have a really strong lead, like I, like honestly, I look up to to Kobe on as not only just a brother but also my mentor. He shows me the ropes in the business. He shows me what what like you said we we learned from the owls, the lessons. You know, he's he's taught me a lot. You know, just coming into it the way we did. You know, and so you know, forever I'll be grateful for that. You know, that's that's my brother. No matter what, Bams, that's my nephew. You know, I got love for him, too. He came in and he had an aspiration to be a videographer and a photographer. Does dope ass photos. Shoots everywhere. Yeah. Kobe yeah. On, not a lot of people know. Kobe on shoots videos. He does videography. He sh he has TV shows. Yeah, we got some we got some dope shit coming out. Yeah, man. Yeah, we, we got can. some we got some dope shit. We're moving into management. Yep. We're moving into management. We will have a music label. We'll main, main more an entertainment media label. But um. We got a lot of cool shit, and that's why, like, with all these connections, it has opened the door for us to be like, I, I was like, kids, we got to manage people. We have to. We have, we're too connected not to manage people. We could put people in good positions. And again, it, it's, it's um, look, put it like this. When it comes to doing business, I wouldn't want to be on the other side of the table when you're doing business with me and kicks. In other words, you want kicks and me behind you, negotiating for you, talking for you, because we know what they want. We know what they're looking for. We understand numbers. We understand the shit that that might sound foreign. We've gotten past that part. All the lessons that we're taught got us where we're at. Yeah. You know, and I hope whoever's listening out there, if they're looking for management for an actor, an actress, an artist, a model. Uh, I don't care if you even have a low rider that you want to get into movies. Come reach out to us. Let's see what we can do for you. Yeah. You remember? And then, uh, you know, keep in mind, you can always see us on Chicano Hollywood all day. The Download app, the app. The app is free. I'm going to tell you guys right now. The app is free. Chicano Hollywood. 100% going to be the one, the one spot you're going to go to to find all your favorite movies. And it will continue to grow. It will continue yeah. to grow. All these things that we're doing will continue to grow. And I tell people now. When you see something in its big, what I wouldn't have given to be next to Jeff Bezos when he was creating Amazon. Imagine you would have given your left nut sitting next to the people who were creating YouTube. You know, YouTube started off as a dating website. Did you know that? Yep, video dating. It was a video dating. 
And where the game changed, it was it was so bad for them that they were literally putting ads in the newspaper. The owners of YouTube paying people twenty five dollars to upload their bio onto YouTube. Until one fucking day, somebody decided to fucking show a video of him skiing, recorded it, and uploaded it to YouTube, and that changed the fucking game. What I wouldn't to have given to have been one of those people, because I would have seen that shit and been like, oh my God. Facebook. Oh my God. Facebook. Dog. Napster. If you see something, if you're lucky enough, if you're blessed enough to be somewhere where the wheels start spinning and you see a spark, jump on that motherfucker. Support it. Back it. Be a part of it. Because you don't want years to go down the line as a multi-million dollar, multi-billion dollar company and you let that shit go by because you, you, couldn't do 50 you were too to fucking high on your high horse to believe in your homie's fucking business. You, to believe is to achieve, man. <laughs> to believe is to achieve. That's just deep as fuck, dog. Um, I think that's... Well, we got sponsors. I think the last two things will be just like who performers and stuff like that. Putting the venue together. Uh, let's see. Putting the, pop it out or what? Um, uh, I won't tell you not everybody. Yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. I won't tell yet, you everybody, but I'll tell you people that have already been on there that we consider, you know, you know, all the artists are considered, you know, headline material, everything. But um, big ones, I got Doughboy909. Chad I got Iron. I got Iron. Mia May, Tony Coda, Lottie Tony. the G, Mr. Ay, Homicide. Ay. I got Chris Diamond. I got my boy Keo, and Keo's bringing some special friends. You're gonna, you're gonna definitely want to be there. Rich G, that's it. Rich that's G, it, that's it. No more. Okay, you don't want me go. That's it. That's it. That's it. Oh man. Yeah, okay, we haven't even dropped the, the release yet. None of that. Oh, and I also gotta say, sentence. play the Ville, just cause play the Ville, man. Hey, much love to play the Ville up there in Victorville, man. Yeah, I know he's been play. on your podcast, yeah, bro. Yeah, shout out to play. Really cool dude. You know, you know who I listen to that I really like. N two D. N two. No, Nikita. Nikita. Yeah, Nikita. She's dope. Too dank. Too DNK. She's dope. Yeah. Hey. She's dope. That's someone you need to have on your podcast. She's dope, boy. dog. She's dope. Like, Damn. you know what? I heard her and I was listening and I was like, yo, the right people behind her can blow her the fuck up. Hey, what about Cuban Link? We got we can't forget Cuban my boy Cuban Link's Link. from Terror you know Squad. Cuban you know, he was with Terror Squad. He'd be at Urban Con. Cuban okay. Link's a legend. You know, um, definitely legend. You know, there's a lot of surprises, a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, you're going to see um, that. Trust me, when it comes down to the artist side, the music is a small aspect of the whole thing. Yeah, that's another thing, dog. Hold on. That's an important thing. You know, I, people have this idea that it's like you're walking to a concert. Urban Con is not a concert. It is not designed to be a concert. It is not a concert. It will not be a concert. Urban Con is not, let me repeat that again. Urban Con is not a concert. It's an interactive event. It's an interactive event with people that you normally wouldn't see at a big venue. And there are people that are just there to, like, it, it's, 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 it's the people that are hard to find. Those influencers They're, don't see every day. It is not a concert. There's more to Urban Con than a, than a music performance stage. Thank you. You've been having us on your podcast. It's, it's been an honor. Yeah, no, I definitely Honestly. got the call from uh, from Barrios, and um, it was an easy call. You know, he told me about you guys, what you guys are trying to put together, and it's definitely like aligns itself with my values and what I'm trying to do here, which is put on for you know our people, people who hey, are. Hopefully, we can have you out there, man. Hopefully, you come yeah, out no, there. Yeah, no, come on through. Come, yeah, come out through. there. Yeah, I was gonna ask, are you guys gonna have like plat- uh, podcasts out there, like podcasts? Yeah, yeah. Yes, J- J- Jr. and the crew is gonna be there. Um, we have a little podcast village for everybody to come out there. You guys got to come there to see who's going to be there. Okay. But I guarantee you, you're not going to miss it. And see, you know, you know, one of the things, one of the crazy things that that we did at Block Report was like we wanted to interview other podcasts. You know, mm-hmm. everybody was like, like a lot of podcasts were like, no. They think the it's fuck? competition. It's, it's a not- competition. Like, dog. The way we film our podcast is different from how you film your podcast. Right. The people that watch your podcast don't watch our podcast. Like, like th- that's the problem, dog. Is like, like, homie, every morning when the sun comes up, there is enough sunshine for you and me. 
There is no competition for the sun sh- for the sunshine. The shine together. That we, you know, what I'm saying we're gonna shine together, man. And I believe me, believe you me. I would much rather have these other podcasts as allies than to have them as enemies. Yeah, I have the same vision too. Cause um, I went to a show, a live podcast, and there, you know, a bunch of other podcasts showed up. I'm like, damn, we're all Latino podcasters. Like, we should have our own show together. So my idea was to have like a rotating like. Say you guys have a podcast, I'll have you one time and you next week, and then somebody else from a different podcast, and just every week have a different group, a uh, different set of people, just all podcasters. I was gonna call it the Brown Militia Podcast. Oh, nice. But, you know, the thing that, like you said, it's kind of tough sometimes, to either just to get on people's schedules or having people like, like come together, like oh, dog, we dog. Take let let, 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 let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. I'm kind of old, but back in the day, do you guys know the Flintstones? Yep. Yeah. You guys know the Jetsons? Yep. Do you remember the episode where they jumped into each other? Where they fucking went in the same ep- in the same episode? Do you have any idea how fucking nuts that was? No, you want an even better one? Remember the Power Rangers and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? You see oh, what, what about when Peter Griffin was fucking up Homer Simpson? Oh fuck. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? <laughs> do you remember when Next Videos was on Spank Bang? <laughs> no, okay, that's the difference. No, Hold on, no, no. wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. I need a, I need when a Pamela second. Anderson was with Tommy Lee. <laughs> <laughs> with Tommy Lee. The you point know, is collabing works. Collabing works, dog. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? Ray J, Kim Kardashian. <laughs> yeah, you know, God, yeah, you know, yeah, those are yeah. ultimate, things. you know, ultimate, you know, like. Opportunities. Too. Opportunities, dog. Like, people, like, you don't realize, like, 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 those type of shit, dog. That goes back to your egos. Remember it, yeah, egos. it's because they're too fucking good. And you know what? Those are the cancers we need to do away with in the culture. Those, those, they have to leave. They're, they're no good. Bye, Felicia. You know what I'm saying? Extend a hand down. Help the next person out. Help the next person out. It, it's free. It's honestly, you know, it's crazy is that you'll get people that are really like up there. They may reach from 500 followers to 50,000 followers and totally forget that the guy with 5,000 followers helped you out. Why, you know, why am I going to help him out? Because that guy gave you an opportunity. You give the same thing back. Remember, in this lifetime, karma is real. You give what you receive. So if you're giving out this negative energy, you're not going to stay in the, the game very long. Have you ever seen your favorite artist be on top right here, number one song, and then next year you don't even know who he is? I've seen many artists go like that. There's a lot of people that just that just fall off their high horse. And, and, then I, and, I, and point, I don't get it. And I just don't I just don't get that, dog. I, I really don't get like the whole attitude. Look, man, I promise you, one day I will fucking expose those motherfuckers. I will say, but not right now. Cause right now, I'm nothing. But don't let me get a little popularity and fucking and I start saying, hey. I'm going to go on a live one day. You remember that one motherfucker? Blah, blah, blah. Because you know what, dog? When you get them alone and you start talking business, oh, man, that culture shit go right out the fucking door. Hey, can we, can we bring out that, that fact that I remember 50 Cent and the game worked together, right? What happened when the game dissed 50 Cent? 50 didn't go back over there and start, start beefing with them anymore. He let him have, have his run. Where's 50 at today? Where's game? And where's game? Why wasn't the game at Super Bowl? That was, like, was. that was the longest chess move that has, I have seen in a long time. Like, ja right, Rule this You're not going to be in the Super Bowl. And I'm sure the game was heard about Ja Rule was hot. He was, Remember when he, he had was. Murder, Inc.? He was hot, right? He dissed the fuck out of 50 Cent. Now 50's out there buying the whole front row so no one fucking goes to your, yeah. your show. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, dog. Like, like, I'm telling you, man, there's no sense in creating issues and problems with people. You're, you're literally, like, I don't even understand why somebody does a diss record. I mean, unless you got a personal, 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 personal beef, okay, I get it. I get it, right? If fucking, if, if, you know what I'm saying? No, but if you're nobody and you're going at King Little G, what the fuck is wrong with you, homie? Yeah. King Little G ain't going to know who the fuck you are. Right. And then don't let him fuck around and one day see it, sitting at his home. I've been to King Little G's pad. Beautiful fucking pad. Don't let him be in his bed watching for you to be like, oh, let me see who this me. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Where's his next show at? I got, I got you. I see where your next show's at. And then one day this motherfucker shows up. What's up, King? What's up, my boy? Like, I remember who the fuck you are. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so 
is what I'm saying, man. Like, really watch your words. Don't, don't, don't cause problems. Don't be the solution issues. to someone's problem. You know, don't start attacking. I see it all the time when they start attacking nationalities and backgrounds. Like, I'm like, what are you doing, dog? Like, dog. Every nationality is beautiful, dog. Like, like, like. Okay, I'm gonna say some stereotypical shit, but it's true. Have you ever gotten a massage before? Yeah. When you go get a massage, do you go to like Anglo people or do you go to the Asian community for a massage? Mm, yeah, Asians, I guess. Why? Because they know what the fuck they are doing. I had a different answer. When I when <laughs> when when I get it, when we buy a donut, I don't set foot in Winchell's. I look for the most I look for the Asian bu- fucking donut shop. Cause they make the best goddamn a- the best fucking donuts. Asian people know what they're doing when it comes to donuts. Okay? Corner. Every nationality now Asian people contribute so much more. I'm just saying in like, you know, well, we Just can relate to it, right? right? African-American people, singers, athletes, entertainers, entertainers in rappers. I mean, they put out so much great content, so much stuff that we enjoy. Um, Mexicans, from, let's say, another people looking at us from the, you know, from the outside looking in, they go, I love tacos. Hard workers. Hard workers, right? What I'm trying to say is that every nationality contributes something. Something beautiful. Something beautiful. Jewish Jewish communities create these m- big platforms that we enjoy, where we get our music and movies from. It, it, it's what I'm trying to say is like, be nice to everybody, dog. Don't don't. Don't everybody contributes. Everybody has substance. Everybody's beautiful, and don't isolate yourself into one isolate. box. Yeah, don't be in a box. Fuck with everybody. It's dog. okay. To, it's okay to spread out there. Meet different people. Meet successful people. Meet people that are going to the next thing. Just never stop growing and learning from everyone around you. Dog, have you seen the women that are in Puerto Rico? Have you ever <laughs> seen the women in Puerto Rico? Yeah, dog, I have. I have. Mail order bride. Have you seen the women in Brazil? Imagine saying you don't like Brazil. <laughs> You're fucking nuts, homie. <laughs> Have, you know what I'm saying? Like, who doesn't yeah. like anime? You know what I'm saying? My daughter sent me little cute videos of little cute kitties and shit, right? And the little <laughs> cute stuff. I don't give a fuck how hard you are. You go look at that and be like, oh, that's kind of cute. <laughs> <laughs> we all contribute, homie. We're nice. all beautiful cultures. We're all beautiful people. Love each other, respect each other, fuck with each other, support each other, and uh, fucking grow, and man. Grow, man. Let, let's do something big. Enjoy you. everybody, dog. Facts. Uh, this has definitely already been like the longest podcast I've ever done. Oh, we're, we're on like two hours right now. No worries, oh, man. Uh, we definitely have to have you guys back and talk more about it because obviously you guys are like a, a wealth of knowledge when it comes to you know the entertainment business or just in life in general. Uh, but as we get out of here, you can, uh, let the people know where we can find you. Uh, you can find me at official underscore kicks the legend. Find me on uh, X videos, <laughs> Kobe on the Mons, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Oh, that shit. Only fans under Pretty Toes. Pretty Toes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but sh- also, can uh, we shout out a couple people too as yeah, well? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, yeah I want to shout out uh, Brown Label. Brown Label Entertainment. Yes, sir. I want to shout out Brown Label. I want to shout out Thrifts. I want to shout out RTM, Concerts for You, uh, Johnny from Chicano Hollywood. I want to shout out uh, La Bombo Mix, uh, Ink, uh, Ink Junkies. I fucking love that dude. That dude is awesome. Yeah, he's really awesome. Great vibes. Uh, shout out, you know, everyone at Cholo Bingo too. That that, that yeah, right, to right, us. right, 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 um, right. Who else, bro? Shit, Pure Uncut, Pure Uncut, and Seuss. You know, hey, I told him, hey, what's up? Hi, Seuss. That was one of his things they, they want to say. Hello. Hello, what's Seuss. Up, Seuss? Uh, but um, you know, shout out Seuss. Shout out everyone at the Pure Uncut camp. Uh, shout Fucking out Taylor Swift. Homie. Shout, shout out, out all the Taylor artists. Swift, shout bro. out all the supporters. Shout out everyone that's <laughs> given us an opportunity to to uh, to bring you guys this entertainment. You know, and shout out you especially for yeah, having us on your yeah, podcast. No, thank, much love, dog. Hey, shout out 
Mr. Little One. Oh, Mr. Little One. You know, Chicano Music Festival. CC the Mamacita. CC the Mamacita. Commitment, Commitment Soldier. Soldier. Funk Freaks. Um, shit, dog. Um, and you know what, man? PCW. PCW. Garrett. PCW Ultra. Garrett. Much love, my boy. Um, Horacio and, and, and Yesenia from Chingon the Magazine. Mike from Modelo. Yeah. Um, and Eddie from Eddie, Constellation. Eddie, Eddie from Constellation. Um, um, Fabi from Mort Legacy. Fabi from Mort Legacy. Evelyn from YE Insurance Services. Um, you know, and and um, and like like we said, the artists and everything. And artists, and and honestly, shout out everybody that has actually made Urban Con something. Without them, this is not nothing. So we have to thank the culture for fucking with us because. Without the culture, there is no Urban Con. There is no Kobe on. There is no kicks. There is no bam. Like, like without, without dog, you, we wouldn't we would be nothing, we dog. Like, I, I feel cheesy in saying that, you know, because that's what all these, you know, like my, my baby girl, that's what Taylor Swift says all the time when she wins an award, you know. She goes, I wouldn't be nothing without my fans. But in reality, like, I don't mean to sound cliche, but, dog, like, we really are nothing without the support of the culture and for that we are forever in depth with great full like we are just forever grateful with that shit because we're nothing without the homies exactly facts and hope to see everybody there at urban con oh yeah well, hope you guys make it to urban con october 22nd right at the sunday Yonsei. ontario oh. convention and remember you can get two free tickets 100th comment on the lip outlet make sure you guys shout us out make sure you guys tag us on instagram Make sure you and follow. Make sure you, well, Bam. What's your What's your IG, dog? Bam underscore Bam nine five one. He's single. Ready he he he's ready to mingle. <laughs> he's he, wearing a Bucky's uh fucking Bucky uh, Texas sweater. So he's down for you long road trips. You saw him on Res Dogs. You a see, times. Hey. You <laughs> saw him on X videos. If you like to um uh cupboard, the Indian in the cupboard. <laughs> if you like to take, if you're an Instagram model, you need a photographer and a boyfriend. We got the you know Bam's ready right there. Bam's for handles business. <laughs> he, he got Bam camera. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do bam bam to you uh again thank you guys for pulling up i really appreciate it it's an honor yeah, to have you guys here i uh, hope to see you guys very very soon and to everybody out there thank you to all the patreon members our newest patreon members that uh subscribe this month really appreciate you guys and like we always say pull up turn up stay lit let's get it yeah yeah